So we have, um, if you could please make sure you put on your pins. This would be a very good show of respect and um, admiration for our presenter who will be here at 10.30 this morning. Hopefully she'll be here by 10.30, maybe she get here earlier. But uh, Progressive, again, is one of our premier partners and I'll introduce her in just a few minutes. But let's continue on with the, uh, the uh, number one presenter today. He's gonna be here all day with you. Uh, at least I'm hoping he'll be here all day with you, but I may have to come back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he'll be here all day. So, um, yeah, I know you can, man. I know you can. <laughs> we all know George can, right? So, uh, our director of property and casualty has been with us for, well, our organization for seven years. Now, here, here's some, some thoughts about a lot of our directors. Just like you saw this morning, we had a introductory or an introduction to our daily huddle meeting. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, these guys are on the freedom side. That's why, how do they get to speak on the liberty side? Well, in our organization, we have this, this position uh, and it's called doing whatever it takes. And oh. <laughs> yeah, and uh, our, our organization is structured so that it, everybody works on everything. Now, everybody has some focal points and some specific responsibilities, but everybody has to come and play a role in our business because, well, I want them to know everything. It's part of just being part of us. And um, George's been here for seven years. So George fills two roles or he had filled two roles for a long time, which was an area or a district manager at the time, as well as our director of property and casualty. Now this past year, I realized that the business could really use somebody specific to growing this particular line of business. And because it took a lot to really run property and casualty because I was running it with him and it was a really big challenge. So many carriers and so much technology and so many things going on that it's just overwhelming at times. So I decided that it would be in our best interest if we told George, hey, we, we, we kind of fired him at Liberty and uh, put him full time at Freedom as our director of property and casualties. So he, he now fills that role by with a team, not by himself, but we're gonna go ahead and, and um, keep on promoting him as long as he keeps on doing the right things for you guys. And you all give me some feedback as we go through this, but I really appreciate and admire everything he does for our business and, and of course his commitment. And I wanna to introduce to you our Director of Property and Casualty, George Nino. <laughs> well, good morning, how y'all doing today? Y'all excited? Yeah. I, I saw some of y'all last night drinking. <laughs> some of you have shades on, like, okay, <laughs> for this presentation. So today I have a lot of good information from you as what they were saying earlier. Um, the auto, home, and commercial, it's a big business. It's a lot of customer, a lot of attention to the customers that we need to do. You know, customers come in to make payments all the time. There's a lot of servicing that we need to do. And overall, it's gonna help us overall take care of the customers more. And just so you know, this property and casualty or the, the auto home and commercial, I can't do this alone. You know, it, it takes a team effort, it takes what we're doing. And overall, we've been building a great team to make this happen. Um, every day that I'm working, I'm looking to improve it each day in making sure that processes and systems are easier for you and to making sure that well, as I've said, we're the guinea pigs, right? We go in there and we try things with our agents. And when we release things to you, we want to make sure it's easy, simplistic, and something that you can catch on very well. I want to take on all the obstacles. I want to take down all the falls for you. I want to make sure that I do all the hurting for you. So when I come to you, you don't have to hurt as much as we did. All you have to do is run with the system that we provide to you. And all you have to do is just follow it. And trust me, as we, as we at the very beginning, we had a lot of downfalls. We struggled a lot. And I got bruises and scars and hits behind the head from David <laughs> in a lot of ways to this, to this business. And overall, we did a lot of good stuff from here forward. And I'm really excited by the stuff I got presented to you today. Now, you see, I got a whole day presentation. Now, the whole day presentation was actually two days. I'm like, okay, let me cut it down for a day. I know y'all want to go fishing and drinking and progresso and everything y'all want to do. So I kind of have to condense a little bit. But overall, um, I got a lot of good information I want to share with you. So please. Take a lot of notes. Ask a lot of questions. Um, if you don't understand something or you want me to clarify something, let me know. I'd love to clarify it for you. So before we start anything, 
I'm gonna to wanna to show you I wanna show you our our engine one second and get that for you. The marketing agent portal. Now, I know you went through the other day. Um, you went through it through the share button. Okay, so you went through the marketing agent portal. And this portal, I'm a very big fan of it. <laughs> I really love this portal so much. And I'm always directing people to the portal. Uh, you know, when I started with the Liberty System, and you know that I've been, I've been one of, I'm David's longest employee, seven years, going eight years. Uh, Liberty throws out some things and sometimes you're like, I don't need this, I don't need that. And you kind of, you want to do what you want. And sometimes you think we're, some, we think we're smarter than Liberty. Sometimes we are, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but overall, um, this portal, when we, when we designed it and we put everything here for you, I was like, what can I give the agents to need to know only? And everything I have in your system, in your profiles I have for you, that's gonna help you grow. And I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it simplistic as possible. I only try to give you information you need. I try to don't give you information you don't need whatsoever. And so I wanna kind of show you the portal on the, the property and casualty side so you kind of see it a little bit. Now, as you know, this is one of the portals that we do have, that we currently have. Uh, when you select portals, you're gonna see all the states that we currently operate in. Um, and you're gonna see we're in California, Colorado, Texas, Aransas, Minnesota, and all the states that are there on the side. Um, we're, we're at, man, we got a lot on the East Coast. <laughs> um, so we, and you see that's where every state that we're currently at right now. And as you see the ones that are blue, we're not there yet, but we're expanding as much as possible. So right now I'm gonna use Texas as an example. If you select Texas, and you're only gonna select where you're, the state you're from and the city you're from. Now, right here, these are all the cities we're in right now in the state of Texas. So I'm gonna use Austin as an example. Hope you don't mind, Austin. <laughs> Be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. <laughs> uh, so as here in, in this one, we're gonna see the agents that are here, and you're gonna see, um, you're gonna be divided by um, the lines of license that you currently have. So if you have a life and health license, you're gonna see your, your the agents that are there. If you're property and cash to the general lines, you're gonna have it there. And if you have limited lines, you're gonna see it on the right side. So anytime that you have an agent, you should always encourage your staff to let us know that they're an agent now, so we can add them to the site. What do they get when they get added to the site? Well, they're gonna have a customized sales lock to them so they can document all their entries for property and casualty, life and health products as well. They're gonna, they, we can send them email notifications, let them know um, what's going on in the business. A lot of times we see that we're communicating to the franchisees, but they're not, we're not communicating to their agents. Now we wanna make sure we communicate to agents properly, but we gotta know who they are. They can't be ghosts to us. And you know, sometimes we get calls and we're like, and you are? <laughs> and we, we don't know who people are at, at times. Um, that's how you always gotta communicate with us and let us know who are your current agents. Now, on this part, as we're talking about property and casualty, we're gonna see where it says agent certification. Now for everything for property and casualty, you can see right here where you're gonna need the turburator, your fix, the logins, your forms, the training, the training videos, your reports, and everybody loves the last one, your commissions. No one's excited? Okay, just me. Just me. <laughs> I guess no one likes money around here. But um, so the last one would be the commissions. And these are things that you can see at all times. Now the first one on the agent certification, you're gonna see our roadmap to success. Now what is our roadmap? Our roadmap is something that we're gonna release this year to making sure that all your agents are on point, that know what they're doing, are ready for that next tax season. Because right now, right now that you're in the, the tax season just ended, you probably have thoughts in your head, or if you don't, you probably have them in October, is I want my team ready for the tax season. I wanna go in in January and not lose any business. I want my team to restart quoting during tax season and take advantage of all my customers that are coming through the doors. If this is your first year offering property and cash to you or any kind of services, if you have a thousand clients, 2000 clients, 3000, whatever number of clients you have, even if you have 300, you want to be able to take advantage of those 300 clients and let them know the services you're offering, letting them know what you can do for them. And this is what we're going to do. 
the first step we want to make sure is that of course we get you licensed first you got to take a pre uh you got to take a pre-licensing course now in most states we do have them if we don't have them in your state, we can give you directions of where to get that and to get your team license second thing we're going to do is making sure that once you once you take the course we want you to take the exam and we want you to pass the exam and get approval once you get approved by the state um, you're going to let us know send us an email hey i got a new agent on staff great job we're going to add them to the portal and add them to our notif our email notifications third step so where the fun happens we're going to make sure they get agent certified we're going to make sure they get triple rater certified we're going to make sure they get forms certified and we're going to make sure they get fixed certified some of you that were my in my seat my crm this morning we're going to make sure that your team gets certified on this and when they're complete, I'm going to give you a beautiful uh, certificate letting them know that they're current certified. Because I do believe that your team needs to understand the process on this. If you don't understand this fully 100%, it's not going to work very well. They're just people coming in, checking out checkbox, eh, I know Turborator, but they really don't. They know the premise behind it, but they don't understand it fully. And I want to make sure they understand it really great. I'm going to make sure they understand it fully. And after they go through Turborator, they get form certified because there's quite a bit of forms which we're going to be reviewing today. Um, and we're going to make sure they get fixed certified. After that, after they do those first three, we're going to tackle on carrier certified. I'm going to make sure they go through the carriers and get certified. I'm going to make sure they go through the home and get certified and go through commercial and get certified. Now, just so you know, this is not nothing, no. Um, there's not going to be nothing fancy coming up. These are certifications that we put in place because these are information that I believe that your team needs to know to write with that carrier in order to uh, properly do everything correct. I get calls all the time letting me know, hey, George, I have this question on home insurance. Okay, what's the question? And we go through it. I'm like, did you miss like my last 30 trains I had on home insurance? Because you're missing the, the, the premise of it. And it's the same question being asked over and over and over again. So I know there's a lack of there's a lack of people attending trainings, or there's just, just people just want shortcuts, and it's not going to work that way. I'm going to make sure your team gets certified because starting on when it comes to next tax season in January, if you're coming telling me and Esther's like Esther, I want my team to be selling, I want my team to be doing this. It's been all year. Are they certified? Do they know what they're doing? This is going to let me know how much support we can give you during the tax season. If you're committed to me right now, I'm committed to you during tax season. If you're not committed to me now or committed to us, the whole from here to end of December, then I, I, I fortunately have to give more attention to people that are really trying. Because if you don't try the whole year and then by January, you're like, hey, I want to take advantage of these people. But your team does not know how to quote basic. Your team does not know how to close or take payments. It makes my job and our job very hard. Does everybody understand that? Everybody great? Everybody on this and this? Perfect. And that's what we want to do. And I, I think we have a good plan. I think it's going to work great. And trust me, we're going to be, we're going to be ready by October, hitting it hard and making sure that we're ready for you. Now, next is I can't do this alone. I've been, I've been hitting property and cash pretty hard. I'm, I'm, I'm dug deep in it. <laughs> I'm dug deep in it. And I, every day that I'm working harder to make things easier and to make things more, simpler for y'all. I, I, I need a team. And my team is really my backbone. Because as you know, sometimes I, just, I can't do everything. I need someone calling for appointments. I need someone calling my agents. Um, when y'all need help and um, I got some feedback for some agents, well, if I need help, who do I call right away? If there's a customer right in front of me, who can I talk to to help me in that instant? That's the question I got quite a bit. And unfortunately, this past years, always been me <laughs> it's always been me answering everybody's call helping everybody um but since we're growing at a large pace it's really impossible for me to take care of everybody so i developed a team that will help me with this and help you through this process to making sure that when you call we're going to give you as much support as possible we're going to help you walk through the customers and we're going to do a lot more i have in the presentation but overall this is my support team and i really want to thank them for everything they've done because without them i can't do what i'm doing today I'll probably be drinking by 10 in the morning if it wasn't for them. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do, I want to I kind of bring them up and congratulate them and say a few words. 
Um, and this is my freedom support team. My, you know, I, I've grown to love them and I'm glad to have my team. I'm going to my freedom support team, Nadia Maria. So, <laughs> so Nadia Maria, they've been with me and actually they've been with me. They just joined our team uh, through actually through tax code actually recently. And they, they, well, Maria joined me through Tasco. She came for, uh, to join our class. And unfortunately, she, um, she went out of town and she missed some of the course. And afterwards, um, she did a wonderful job during tax. And I, I saw her post one time. And actually, I didn't know she was still not with us. And I thought she was still attending our courses. And she posted something on Facebook stating that, you know what, I'm going through some hard times and everything. And she was like, I'm really looking for a job. I'm like, man, she did such an amazing job. I want her on my team. So I reached out to her. Five months later, she doesn't leave me alone. Just you know, <laughs> just you know. Five months later, I'm really, I'm really glad that she's on my team, and that's Maria. So, uh, Maria, what's your name? Again, my name is Maria, and I'm with the support team. I'm here to support George and every single one of y'all agents and your staff in anything that you need. So if y'all have any questions or anything, feel free to give me a call. Yeah. Um, so after that as well, um, after we had, got Maria, I needed someone else to help. Um, we had rolled out with a program called Do It For Me, and I need a support team as well. And as we're looking for someone, uh, you know, Nadia came into our, um, fell into our fingertips. And at that point, she said that she was really to help us and our supporting our agents across. Um, they had no auto insurance background for both of them. They had no, no background. And I spent a few weeks with me. They... They learned a lot and now they understand auto home and commercial very well and they can quote very good and they know what they're doing and um it's nadia by the way so my name is nadia and i'm just here to assist you in everything pnc and it was nice meeting everybody <laughs> <laughs> um so and that's it guys. i want to show that's my support team for the moment give them a round of applause okay, have a day. thank you ladies Yeah, <laughs> and that's basically that's you know that's right now my backbone that we have right now, and you know as a team we can make anything happen. Oh, she's not, is she here? Oh, I, I got another one. She's hiding in the back. Hey, Joanna. Uh, here. There she is. I I couldn't find her earlier. So she's trying to hide from y'all guys, but she's not gonna hide. Um, so you wanna bring up Joanna? <laughs> so. So Joanna has been with me for a year. Um, she came in as a, she was an assistant manager for one of our Liberty Tax offices. And afterwards, I, she came in as a freedom support. And last year, it was only me and Joanna in the, in the planting season. And she was doing all the contracting, calling all the agents. And um, she was driving me crazy. And I was driving her crazy back and forth. <laughs> and, you know, me and Joanna, we've been, we've been working about a year together. And all the contracts you have, she's been helping with this. The poor, this beautiful portal that she set up, she's doing that all for you. And overall, she's been a really good asset into in the foundation of what we're doing. And I want you to see the jo uh, Joanna. Sure. Hi, my name is Joanna. <laughs> I'm the assistant manager for the PNC. So if someone's not contracted, they'll be um, con in contact with me. And um, yeah. that's it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Give her another applause. You did amazing. So as you know, I mean, we talk in front of people all the time. My girls in the back, they're like, I'm a little shy. I'm like, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn. <laughs> okay. So first of all, y'all get the PowerPoint? You got the PowerPoint? Great. This is the PowerPoint that we're going to go over today. Um, we're going to cover a lot of stuff for property and county. Um, so once again, did y'all get this document? Yes. So this document that you have right here, I paper clip it for you. Now this document is in order, in the same order as the presentation. So if you can, perhaps mix them up while you go through it or go to the front and back. It will be a good order that we're going to be going through the whole presentation. So as we said at the beginning, um, the property and county is more of a service and business. Uh, we take a lot of payments. There's a lot of forms that we need to do. There's a lot of back and forth of emails you got to do within carriers. Um, it's kind of tedious at times. And overall, it may be overwhelming on what you need to do. 
so I, I put this book together, I put this presentation together so you can understand the fundamentals of auto insurance, home insurance, and commercial on what you should be doing and what you can do to make a difference in your locations. And I'm gonna give you some insights on what you can be doing from here forward. Okay, so this one, the overview we're gonna to cover today. Um, we're gonna to cover auto insurance, home insurance, commercial insurance. We're gonna cover some insurance benefits, fix the DIWM, and take some action. There you go. We go understanding auto insurance. And what is auto insurance? A lot of people get confused on this. And so when you buy insurance for auto insurance, does anybody know how the liability works? But regular liability. Are you buying insurance for yourself or are you buying insurance for the other vehicle? The other vehicle, right? So your insurance covers the other vehicle and then their insurance covers your vehicle. There's a lot of, there's a lot of customers that come in that are unaware of that. They, they believe they're buying insurance to cover themselves. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. So I want to make sure we clarify on that. Next is the state minimum limits. Now, I put all the states that we're currently in. So if your state is on here, you can see the state minimum limits in your state. So for example, we got Ohio in here. We got 25, 50, 25, which means that the bodily injury is for 25,000. The 50,000 is for everybody in the vehicle besides the driver. And then the last one is 25,000 is property damage, which means that is what they cover the vehicle for. So when you get bodily injury, when you get bodily injury plus property damage equals liability insurance, that's what, that's what it works. So for example, if let's say a, a model is driving, he's, he's a driver, they'll pay him a max of 25,000 in the state of Ohio. Now, if there's three people driving, let's say it's Yami, uh, and these, these ladies here in LaRonda, um, let's say they're driving, there's three people in the vehicle, and they all have an accident, they're all gonna get paid, all three, a max of 50,000. So that means, well, model gets 25,000, they're probably gonna get like 17,000 each in that range, because the max is 50. Now, if you look at clown car, and there's like five people in there beside the driver, the driver will still get 25, everybody else still gets 50,000, regardless of how many people are in the vehicle. So that's where I want to make, kind of clarify on that because a lot of people aren't familiar, are not familiar with that. Now, if you're in Texas, we have 36 to 25, and you're gonna see all the states here. Now, you see this abstract? So in that state means that you're required to have uninsured motorists in your state. Now, uninsured motorists means that if anybody's driving without insurance, if, you, if, you're driving, if you're driving without insurance, your policy will be able to pay it. So the uninsured motors in your vehicle, right? Those abstracts means that you have to have it in the state of in that particular state. And then of course, in our state in Texas, we don't have that. We just have just liability. And actually, I wasn't too sure how many states have that. But as I was going through the, I see one, two, um, I see three, I see four, I see five, I see six, I see seven, eight, and nine states that have that. It's only for the states that we're in. So it protects you for people who, who don't have insurance, are driving without insurance. And that's basically from that so far. I want to kind of share that with you. Now, the type of customers you're going to receive are your standard carriers and your non-standard customers. So I think about this on the tax side. You know, you get your first P clients coming in, right? You get your first P clients coming in, and you get your second P. Well, same thing like, same thing like in insurance as well. You get two kinds of clients. Now, your standard clients are the clients that are coming in, they have decent credit, they have no tickets, or maybe a few, they have a good driving record, they have no car accidents, and you can see the trend going from there. Now, on the opposite side, it's different. So it's customer you're seeing, you're like, okay, don't drive where I'm driving. <laughs> That's those customers where they tend to have accidents. They tend to have bad credit. They're getting, they're getting high rates. They, they tend to miss payments a lot. They tend to go ahead and continue missing payments or they're going from insurance company to insurance company. And those are the customers you do got to, you actually spend a lot of servicing with these clients. These are all the servicing that you need to do. So, and there's actually a lot more work. You're gonna see when a, a someone comes in and they're in, in that category, 
Uh, they come in and you're going to see they have two car accidents, three car accidents and a ticket. And they get really high rates and they're telling you, nope, I get, I get good rates somewhere else. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Trust me. I get people that come in and they're like, sir, I, I, I got a rate for 300 bucks over here. And I quote them. I'm like at 450 at times. I'm like, really? I'm like, I can't even beat your rate. And it's weird because I can beat a lot of people. And then a few days later, they come back. Well, I want to buy the insurance. What, what, happened to the, what happened to the insurance? Well, what happens is that a lot, of, a lot of insurance companies, they give customer quotes without running MBRs or without running the car accidents. So they think they can beat me for 300. And then all of a sudden, they get their back run gets run. And all of a sudden, they're back at my door. And he's, that's right. That's right, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you direct them back wherever they came from. So, so at, at that point, that's all the customers that are coming in. So the first document, going back. Now we're gonna see here what licenses we take. Now I, I get calls from this all the time. What do you take in your office? We take everything. There's not nothing that we cannot take. We take driver license, we take no driver license, we take revoke, we take suspended, we take uh, state IDs, we take learner's permits, passports, anything. We take a library card. You come with a library card, we'll take it. <laughs> There's a, I promise you we will. We have a care for everybody. Uh, the most common one, if you're in state of Texas, uh, matricula consular, a foreign driver's license, a foreign, dr uh, foreign passport, anything, we'll take it. There's not no one you cannot write with. So, you, you know, when people come to our doors, do you take this? Just say yes. Yes, we got it. And so you might be thinking when you first knew is, well, if they take this license, what carrier do I go to? Now, some carriers like certain people. They let, they might, some carriers might tell you, you know what? We only like people with driver's license. We do not want nobody with state ID. They might tell you that. Some people may tell you, you know what? I like people with uh, international driver licenses. So Eric Care maybe give you something different. So what I did was I created a document for you. That'll be the first document we're gonna go over today. And this document is called the Acceptable Drivers. And you're gonna see it, it's on the, this first document you got right here, Acceptable, acceptable Drivers. So um, this is a, a coming soon, just so you know, May, May 24th is a rollout for you. Now this is uh, ours that we have for us. Now I'm going to make one for you, a customized one for you for every single location with only your carriers. So as you know, we have, we have about 15 to 17 carriers. I don't want you to see all 17 because why it doesn't really pertain to you. There's a bunch of useless information for you. I only want to give you information that is useful to you. So um, by, by next Friday, I'm going to, it's going to be rolled out into your portals where you're going to see, and it's going to tell you, Hey, you have these carriers, this is the, where it's gonna happen. If they come in with this, this is where you go. These are the carriers that you should use. Is there, does everybody like that? Good. Now, you see the next page where it says discounts offered? I want you to take a look at it. Look at that. Now, a lot of people ask me as well, well, George, well, what, what can we do with the customer? This discounts offer is what you can, the discount you can offer for the customer. Now, there's advanced quoting, all of them should be X, I don't know why there's not X, but anyways, proof of prior, homeowners, EFT, length of ownership, good student, and in-agency transfer. That last one, an in-agency transfer is huge, huge. A lot of people miss it. So, what discounts are these? And in, an uh, in-agency transfer basically means they currently have a policy with you with one carrier and you swap them with another carrier within your organization. Carriers love to steal business from each other. So they give you a very good discount. Um, we have a few carriers that go up to 20% discount for swapping. It's very, it's very timid. It's very, it's very nice that they do that, but that means more servicing. That means always recording. That means always looking to beat the customer's price. So this is the discount that you have. I um, mean, you see the proof of uh, proof of auto, proof of homeowners, EFT on every single carrier. You get these three discounts automatically. 
But these are the main three discounts in every single carrier where you should spend a lot of time and focus because this is where you can make a big difference. Now, length of ownership is something where some carriers do offer where if you have a vehicle for a longer period of time, you get better, you get a better rate for it. And good student, if they're under 23 with a higher GPA of 3.0, they get a discount for it as well. So once again, you will have these both customized to you on May 24th. This is a sample for you to look like to be expecting it by May 24th on this. Sure. Um, would you recommend that if you have a client or you want carrier and they've been with you for one few months of time, would you, be, would you switch them to Dynesco or Progressive at that point? It's a, it's a phenomenal question. So this is what I do. If I have a customer for six months, I always re-rate a customer. If, if, they, if, if they come in for six months, should wake up alarm? No, I'm joking. <laughs> and so if you have a customer for six months, you re-quote the customer and put them on a different carrier. So let me explain this. If let's say, for example, the model comes, yes? Yes, yes. Well, yes and no, depends on where you work. And I'll get to that question right now in a bit. So let's say, for example, uh, let's say a model comes in and let's say you have a six month policy. Now, you do not have proof of prior. So model is gonna pay a standard rate for someone who does not have insurance. So let's pretend he comes in and he has no prior. Let's say he pays 80 bucks a month. Now, if he would have came in and he told me he has six months of coverage from 80 will drop to, let's say 70 bucks. If you have one year of coverage, it may go down to 60. He has two years of coverage, 54. He has five years of coverage, boom, he'll be paying 48. Did everybody get the understanding of it? Perfect. So now, model comes in and he has no insurance. He pays 80 bucks. What happens every six months to your auto insurance policy? It renews and what happens to it? No, but what happens to the policy in general? It generally goes up. No insurance company will be like, oh yeah, you're building your six months, let me lower your rate. No, no, they're gonna increase your rates every single six months that you get a renewal. So what they'll do is they'll increase it and it's actually like a small hit, four bucks, five bucks, three bucks. So no one really does anything to it. Ah, three bucks, leave it like that. And they stay with that policy. So now they're charging an extra 12 to 15 bucks. Um, even some carriers even go up 20 bucks a month. I mean, 20 bucks on the renewal. So at this point, model already has six months of coverage, but he got an increase to let's say 85. Now he's like, well, I'm fine, 85 bucks, five more bucks that I'm paying. Me as an agent is like, now you have six months of coverage. Let me requote you. I'll go in the system, I requote him, I'll drop him from 85 because his new rate, I can drop him to 70, 72 in that range. Now, is he happy? He's very happy at this point. I saved them like 15 bucks a month. And I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell them, I'm saving you about 60 bucks or about 120, 150 bucks, some of that for the whole year. I'm gonna let them know that. Why? Because now we build the bond, we're gonna be loyal. So back to your main question, when you swap people, every six months, we're not perfect, we don't do it all the time. I beat my, I beat my agents up all the time on this part. But data, when you requote somebody, always requote to get someone better. Once you get them to progressive, never take them out of progressive. I always recommend, once they go to progressive, leave them there. And the reason why is because uh, progressive, once again, is a national carrier, and it just, it's a standard carrier, which means that if you're in a car accident, they're gonna pay out. They have a mobile app that you can use to control everything. It's a beautiful mobile app. Who has progressive in here? Raise your hands. Look at those hands, great. Do y'all take advantage of the mobile app? Yes? So the mobile app they have is phenomenal. I love the mobile app. You can change your policy, you can view your ID cards, you can make payments, you, get a, you can do roadside assistance, um, it's open 24 hours. Check claim status. Check claim status, like you can do everything from that mobile app, it's phenomenal. So when people go to Progressive, I don't take them off. The only time I take them off is when they call me like, hey, I'm paying too much, I really wanna switch. And I'm like, and I'm like are you sure, you're a good company, I try to leave them there, we're gonna go somewhere else. Okay, let's record you. <laughs> At that point, that's when I record. Other than that, I don't. We have we have about a sixty, about fifty-five to sixty percent customer retention rate with Progressive. 
It's a high customer retention rate. So, only one question. No, I'm joking. So it's a, customers come to you, they may fall into a non-standard carrier. And I get it. There are customers that want to pay month to month. There are customers that want to pay maybe just three months. And I totally get it. Um, if, if, they're, if they're just very adamant that that's where they want to stay, leave them there. There's nothing wrong with it. But I do like to promote them to getting a better policy. Even though they're not on their client, even though you know they hate paying late and all the time, I, I know it. Um, you can always encourage them to get a better policy and let them know to better cover their vehicles. Because regardless if they're a non-standard client or a non-standard uh, client, if they're non-standard, it'll be a good accomplishment to let them know, hey, you're with a great company. This is where you should want to be. And I, I always try to get people to go to um, Progressive all the time. Now, sometimes you don't want to do it because they're in a car, a bunch of car accidents. You don't want your, you don't want your lots of you to go up on Progressive, right? Um, but so if they're in car accidents all the time, then yeah, just leave them where they're at. Even the more they're at. Uh, but there are people that just, they just pay late. They pay late all the time. You always got to follow them. You just got to always be haggling them. You got to go in the front door at four in the morning. Hey, where's my money? Where's my money? You got to do it at times. But overall, it depends on the customer itself. So um, after this, we have um, the coverage that we currently have. Uh, we offer everything. We offer liability, company collision, unsure motorist, towing, rental, PIP, med pay. This is where everybody gets, this is where everybody, there's a big, there's a big gray area, which is comp and collision. The biggest gray area that I've seen, and I still see it to this day. Um, has anybody heard the, tone, the term full coverage? Yes. What does that mean to you? Comprehensive, comprehensive and collision. Does that mean anything else to anybody else? With liability. With liability, that's correct. Does that mean, does that, does that term mean anything to anybody else? So full coverage for you, if the customer goes, I want full coverage, for you, that means uninsured motorists. Okay, does anybody else agree with model? No? <laughs> so let, let me give you this. Now, we're agents, so we probably have a more knowledge than a customer, will, customer have. Customers come in believing full coverage means comp and collision and uninsured motorists. Yeah. It's very common that people believe that. And people will come to us and be like, I want full coverage. And they're like, just so you know, we're giving you comp and collision, but it doesn't come with any, when you, if you get an accident with someone who does not have insurance, that's called uninsured motorist. I want that too. So you have to be very specific on that because if you don't, you, customers may think they have a coverage that they don't have. And it's a very serious. Very, very, very serious. And I'll give you some examples. If you write a policy, and in every policy, um, let's say model, you write a policy, right? When you're doing the e-signatures, what questions are asked every single time? No matter what carrier, they're asked every single time. Did you accept or reject the uh, coverages? Uninsured motorists? And what else? Uh, medical appropriate aid. Um, PIP. Every single, in the state of Texas, in the state of Texas, you, you, you have to reject uninsured motorists and reject personal injury protection. It's mandatory by the state of Texas. Why is that? Because those two are the most common where people are confused on and not explain those services and they can commit fraud in those two areas. And not just the state of Texas, in all states. So, and Houston, it's, it's, a, it's a territory where it's, it's huge. It's a very big issue. No, not in our stores, <laughs> not in our stores, but like in, in Houston in general. Um, so let me explain this. In PIP, is anybody familiar with PIP? Is, yeah, you're, what, what's PIP? What, 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 what coverage is it gets the customer? She's like, I wasn't ready for a follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Great. And she's like, personal injury protection, personal injury. Yeah, covers it. Good. Good job. Anybody else? But what is it? When? When can you use it? If you're injured. 
if you're in a car accident. So if, if, you, if, you, if you make a police report, you automatically get picked. No questions asked. No questions asked, just so you know. To add PIP to, let's say for example, if you add 2,500, $2,500 to the policy, your premium may go up seven to 15 bucks. Now, if you're in a small fender bender, like literally someone goes and taps you, boom, you can call insurance company and hey, give me PIP and they'll cut a check for 2,500 bucks. Just like this. Does everybody see how that could be a very big issue? That's the reason why you have to reject PIP because it's so easy to put a claim in. So, so easy. And if you do not click the signature from the customer, if you do not click the signature from the customer and the customer goes, and just so you know, these customers aren't deceiving. You know who's the deceiving ones? Those blood sucking lawyers. <laughs> Those are the ones that are deceiving. They're the ones that are gonna tell the customers, hey, did you reject PIP? I don't know, they sent everything. They sent everything, let's sue them. And they're gonna, they're gonna call the insurance company and they're gonna be like, nope, my customer never signed PIP. Trust me, every suit that we've seen, it comes in, we get reports, they didn't sign PIP, they didn't sign PIP. And we gotta send them the documents in. And when you, and we, if you don't have that signed, the 2,500 bucks, they're gonna be like, now it's your fault. Your agency's fault for not signing it. Now the carrier's gonna come down and be like, why didn't you sign this? And then there's actions, of course, upon against it. So PIP and uninsured motors are very, um, are very looked at hardly. And that's why the, 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 the uninsured motors is very important too, because a lot of people believe just because they don't have insurance, they're going to be covered. And they say full coverage, as you said, right now it's only competent collision. It's not. So when someone tells me full coverage, my first instinct to say is, okay, I'm covering you for competent collision, which is full coverage. But just so you know, if you don't have, if you get an accident with someone who does not have insurance, you are not covered. Would you like to add that coverage? And you have to tell that, make sure the insurer understands that. And trust me, customers are gonna lie, the lawyers are gonna lie, it's, I get it. We've been in this game a long time, we see a lot of it. But you have to understand to explain that very well with customers. Everybody understand? Great. Now, that's for that, the, the coverage is going down. I do have trainings going more into detail and all these. Next, we're gonna see the policy terms. We do one month, two months, three months, six months, and we even have a one year auto policy. Sure. In Spanish, I call my girls and then they help me through that process. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my Spanish really sucks. Uh, I'm, from, I'm sorry, I'm from Texas, I'm sorry. Um, but, was that? Yeah, what well, she said, great job. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't know, uh, I, I, I'm real text mix here, so uh, I, I say a lot of things, for example, I'll say, instead of saying uninsured motorist, I'm like, Basically, if you get if you um, if you do want coverage, so if someone hits you without insurance, you are covered. And then it's, and I say it's not called uninsured motorist. My Spanish will go into English, so that's how it is in here. Um, so basically, I, I'm sorry, my Spanish ain't great, but overall, if customers don't understand, they're like, "What's uninsured motorist?" If someone doesn't understand uninsured motorist, just tell them, if you get in a car accident with someone who does not have insurance, you are not covered. Yeah, exactly. And I have videos on these, by the way. Well, let, let me, let, yeah, let, let me explain this to Will. For the uninsured motorists, for the uninsured motorists also, guys, guys, give me one second, one second, one second. There's too many people talking. So also the uninsured motorists, hit and runs count as well. Hit and runs count as well. So the uninsured motorists is good to have overall. Now, I do, I, 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 I do this all the time. Most people only get, if they get, for example, liability. Most people, if they have a 2006, 2005, 2008 vehicle, they're on the borderline. Should I get full coverage? Should I get compound collision? Should I not? If they say no, I always try to upsell uninsured motors. Sometimes it's between about, about eight to about 15 bucks as well. I always try to upsell it because I will tell them, have you gone to Walmart and someone dinged your car? <laughs> you know, have you ever, you know, if you're gonna hit and run, you, you haven't, that's good of you. You know, what happens if someone hits you and runs? So we wanna make sure you're protected. Your, your uninsured motorist, it protects you for bodily injury and property damage, which means that if your limits are 36 to 25, those limits will transfer to you. So you're covered for that. 
So it's very good to have it. I'm very, I'm a very big, I'm a very big fan of if someone wants liability, I tell everybody, add uninsured motorists. Um, try to upsell it for them. If they only want company collision, upsell uninsured motorists. Now the other ones, I, I do have towing rents and all that, but I'm very big on uninsured motorists. I'm very big on it. And is we'll go from there. Now find your payer people so they can handle it. I can answer that. What was your question? No. Well, it depends on your state. It depends, depends on the state. Um, our, Texas is different. Texas, they don't care if you have uninsured motors. Um, on the state of Texas, all they care is about comp and collision with a $500 deductible. That's it. it. It depends on your state and it depends on the contract that they have. Yeah. So, in a, once again, state of Texas, right? We, they only require to have comp and collision. And the buy here payers is the exact same thing, comp and collision. The highest it'll take for us is a thousand dollar deductible. In, in in our area here, Annenberg might be different over there, but for us, we can't have more than a thousand dollar deductible here in our area. Now, in, in yours, you may talk to them if they don't offer it, just give them the comp and collision and what they want. So is everybody on the same page? Perfect. Once again, we offer one month, two month, three month, six month, a one year policy. Now, on um, this one, but my PowerPoint is going backwards for some reason. On this one, we're gonna go to the next screen on the this next document, what's called cancellations and renewals. Now, this is a huge one that a lot of people miss. And I, I see a lot where I see a lot of lack where sometimes agents tend to not follow up at times. Um, and I say, you know, we had a lot of downfalls and we had a lot of, we had a lot of obstacles ourselves. And I, I saw a big thing where agents wouldn't call customers or if they'll call a customer, they'll call them one time, that's it. Oh, I did, I made the call, check mark, check mark a box that they made, they've been called. But how many times do you actually supposed to call a customer? Till they pay. Yeah, to their pay. And sometimes when, the, when the, the payment is past due, they stop calling. Oh, it's already past due. They focus on the new customers. And you lose so much money doing that. So I created this cancellation form. Once again, it will be given to you on May 24th. It's going to be a little bit prettier, given to you on May 24th as well. And some more information on there. But let's talk about cancellations. A one month, two month, and three month. They have a no grace period. So what does no grace period means? It means when their policy ends that day, it, yeah. it ends. There's no more coverage whatsoever. On a six month and a one year policy, you get a 10 day grace period. So let's say for example, let's say Amy, let's say you're driving and let's say your policy is due, the today, today's what, 17 or 18? 17. 17th, right? Today's May 17th. So let's say your policy is due today. And let's say you get an accident on May 20th. God forbid, right? God forbid. It's May 20th. Now, May 20th, you get in a car accident, but you haven't paid your bill yet. And you're like, man, I, I do I have insurance? I don't have insurance. I'm past due. Well, if you have a six-month policy for one year, they're still obligated to cover you in one condition. You have to make your payment. So the insurance company will be like, okay, we'll, we'll cover you, but make your payment first. Because if you can't make your payment, we're not going to cover you. So I promise you, for some reason, you'll make that payment. <laughs> you'll make that payment, right? Yeah, you'll find that money quick, right? You didn't find it when you a few days ago, but you'll find it quick now. Exactly. The the and it's on this document that I have right here for you. So this document that we have right there is a ten day grace period. Now underwriting, underwriting is a very very big issue. Now once again, we're in a service business. And you're gonna see a lot of customers come in with proof of priors, the homeowners, they have, a, they have international driver license or for whatever reason, um, some carriers want you to submit those information to them. So if, if someone comes in with proof of auto insurance or proof of homeowners, the carrier is gonna tell you, send it to me. They're gonna verify it and then they're gonna give you the discount. Now, the carrier does two things. Excuse me. Carrier does two things. One carrier can do is if you don't send them the documentation, they're going to cancel the customer's policy. That means in 15 days from the start of the day, they will be canceled. 
So let's say, for example, they start the policy May 1st, excuse me, by May 5th, they're gonna get a letter letting them know, hey, you got 10 days to give us documentation. If you don't get the documentation in the next 10 days, your policy will cancel. They're gonna get a, what's called a cancellation notice or with a 10 day warning. And then by May 15th, if the documents are not submitted, well, the policy is canceled. Now, is that fair for the customer to, to get the policy canceled? How would you feel, um, Robert, how would you feel if a customer will come to you and be like, sir, I didn't know I need all the documents, my policy is canceled. How would you feel? I feel kind of dumb for not letting them know, you know, we need this information uh, when we sign up the, the, the paperwork, the contract. Right? And then what happens, you find out that you charge, your t you, charge your, you charge them a $50 agency fee. And if you don't know what it is, we'll talk about it a little bit later. You follow them a fee. Yeah, you didn't do your audit. People are on that. Yeah, and that's why I tell my team all the time, I go, how can you charge a fee without doing your job? They're in front of you. I mean, if someone tells you they have a homeowner's policy, what would you do? Ask for a copy of it. Ask for a copy of it? What's easy? Well, who, let me rephrase this. How many of you are homeowners? Raise your hand. Okay, leave them, leave them raised, leave them raised. Now, leave your hands raised if you carry your home insurance policy with you. There you go. <laughs> All the hands came down quick. So what do you do? Go to HCAT. Ah, there you go. You can find anybody's home policy online. You can go to the appraisal district and you can find it, which we can cover there today. So, so you don't have to, when it comes to homeowners, you don't have to be like, do you got your homeowner policy? My question is, is under your name. Everybody says they're a homeowner, then you find out, well, it's under my mom's name because, well, you know, this is happening and they get a, get a whole side story, but they believe they're homeowners, which they're great. They probably are homeowners, right? But the paperwork says different. So that's my question. You tell me you're a homeowner, great. It's under your name? Yes. And then like, okay, then you find out later on it's not. So, but do you see that happening? Okay, so now he tells me he's homeowner. Now, proof of auto. Most people do carry proof of auto with them. It's in their car or maybe still in the glove department. Or maybe it's in the packet they gave you six months in the car under your seat, somewhere around there, right? It's there somewhere. Uh, some people may have even a mobile app. If they're coming from State Farm, Geico, um, Farmers, any big national company, you can go online and get it. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to ask people, just so you know. If someone tells me, if you come in, Joe, you tell me, I got farmers. I'm like, do you have your insurance policy? Oh, I lost it. Great. Do you know your logins to log into farmers online? Tell me yes. Do me a favor, can you log in real quick so I can help you with this policy? And you're like, well, I might not remember your password. Sure, can I help you with it? You might, who knows the password? Oh, my daughter. This is where you call your daughter real quick and we can get access to this and I can explain what I'm gonna do. I just wanna get your documentation to get it ready so you won't have to come back in a couple of days or you won't get a letter, uh, you won't get a love letter saying your product's gonna cancel. So I wanna help you with this. Right now, since you're here, let's take care of this. And most people will send me their, their username and passwords I'll log in for them. I'll do every that printer everything I need. I'll be just mostly looking at everything they have in there, right? And then, and then I log out. Yeah, I, I trust me. I'm, I'm just going. I go in there and I find out everything. I, I find out if they have renters. I find out what they have and I record them. I'm savage like that. I love it. So, yeah. So, I, I do stuff like that. And that's what you should be doing as well. So, I find out their autos and I find out their homeowners quick. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. It's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a pretty picture where this happened. And sometimes there's work that you have to do. You have to call the carrier. Now, Esther, and you've been writing about this for a long time already. How many times have you had a customer told you they have insurance, you can't find it anywhere, but they tell you they have to go back to the old insurance company to get it? Has it happened to you before? A few times a week. A few times a week? Okay. So this happens quite often where and we have a big, uh, there's a big uh, insurance company here called Pronto and, you know, um, King Protector, whatever this new, new name is now. Um, but these new, these insurance companies, man, I, I love it. I'm the customer right in front of me. I'll call, I'll, yeah, Pronto, let's call them. Let's do it. I call them and I'm like, hey, I'm from Freedom Insurance. Um, I have a customer here who wants uh, insurance cards. You know, I'd like to get his tech page, please. And then they're like, he's here, verify his information. He get it and they email it over. Oh, I love calling agencies and I do it. I tell you, I'm savage like that. I'll do it all day, all day, I'll do that. And I'll call other insurance companies. And I'll, I love stealing their business. 
Because why? Because I know uh, they. I know they do to me, or they do some our stores. But the girls in the back, man, I tell the girls, call the agency with them. Call three way. They're not in person. Call three way. Call them. Just merge the call. Yeah. That's all you have to do. And we we find ways to get the documentation. So there's there and but the customer can do it right there and then for whatever reason, not nah, a lot of works and this. Well, if I take away the discount, your price goes up ten bucks. Yeah, let me make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a phone call. You gotta let the customers know that. Does everybody understand that part? Great. So that's the underwriting part. Reinstatement. Reinstatement, it's oh I always prefer to reinstate a customer versus rewriting. So what's the difference? A reinstatement. If you have a policy and all customers, all carriers are different, but within 30 days, most carriers, you can reinstate a policy. So let's say Jim comes back here and Jim doesn't, um, Jim's policy cancels. It physically canceled. Now, 15 days later, Jim comes back. I want to start my policy again. I can do a reinstatement and I can reactivate his old policy. He pays back his previous balance and they'll start it again like if nothing's ever happened. Okay. So then Jim is like, well, I haven't had insurance for 15 days. Well, they're going to reinstate it. You have insurance for those 15 days. So you got to make up that payment. And he's like, no, I want to do another payment. I want to do another policy. Well, let me explain why you shouldn't. Does anybody, anybody can take a guess why? Rates are going to go up, probably. Why would his rates go up? Because he was uninsured. He's uninsured now. Now he's going to say he doesn't have coverage. There's a lapse in coverage now. Versus having continuous coverage. That's the reason why I tell people reinstate, reinstate, reinstate. When people cancel, you still call them. <laughs> hey, I see your policy is canceled. You know, let me help you with this. Let me go ahead and see what I can do to get you back on another policy. Because that's the best way to keep customers. I promise you, customers, and trust me, I was that customer. I was a non-standard customer for a long time. Y'all probably would hate me if I was a customer. I, 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 my payments were always late. I, and back when I had a car, I was always, I would drive like three months without insurance. One time I went a year without insurance. And I was that guy, trust me. I, I, I was that guy. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, I've been doing insurance for a few years now, and this is the longest I ever had insurance straight. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I was that bad driver. But me, me, me as a director, I was like, you know what? I'm doing insurance. I go, you know what? And I, I, it's cause I never believed in that. I was like, it's an extra bill. I go, I'm a safe driver and I really am. You know, I, 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 I drive her safe. You know, I see no cops, I haul ass and I'm a good driver. You know, I like it. <laughs> you know, so I'm a great driver. But overall, I, I, I just felt like, I just like, it's an extra bill on me. And you know, back then when I was, I was going through a lot of stuff, I was like, insurance wasn't on my radar. Or like insurance, money for my son. Insurance, you're out the way. Boom. Like everything was really out. If I didn't need it, I was cut out of it. And insurance wasn't in my priority. Now that I, I do more of this, I see what happens. I believe in wholeheartedly. I think I'm like on three years straight, three and a half years straight on the churn. I'm actually proud of it. People laugh, but I'm, I'm proud of this. <laughs> like I really am. And, and now I feel like now I'm a standard carrier. I'm a progressive. I got a really good carrier. I'm like, oh, I feel like a badass now. I'm like, yeah. I'm really, really good about it. But overall, I was that client. And so the reinstatement, the reinstatement can happen to anybody. You can get anybody and you can switch them over and always reshape the policy. So rewrite means basically you get the customer, rewrite them, and you can put them any other carrier. Oh, during the time that the coverage has left and you wait, you're being reinstated. Suppose you have an accident. Do they go back and pay for that? If you reinstate it? Yeah. If, if, if it's canceled if it's canceled and it happened prior no 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 but if you reinstate it and it happens afterwards yes yeah, yeah that's correct yeah but they don't go back no they won't no. so next will be renewals we talked about calling customers 30 days in advance uh record them every six months and it allows you to charge them another agency fee now at the end you want to get customers to a standard carrier so um model was saying earlier was about um, how do you recall customers and hit them with the renewals, right? Well, at this point, we're gonna do is I told Mike, okay, look, so you're paying 80, the example, he was paying 80 bucks. <laughs> he went at 85. So now I tell him, so look, I got you at 70 bucks, um, 70 bucks a month. You're dropping 15 bucks a month, but your down payment is now 
um, just to get this policy started, I can start your 95 for your payments go to 70 bucks. Are you happy? Sure, we close the policy, yet does he know that his actual down payment was 70 bucks. I charge him $25 or 20 bucks for an agency fee. So I charge him another agency fee, I got another policy, and we're all happy campers at this point. Because he's saving money, I got, char I got paid for work that I did, and we're all great. So it's always good to recall customers as much as possible. Okay. So now, required to disclose yes, you are required to. You you are required to disclose it, and I'm talking about that as well. So this is the part where it says get customers to say yes. A lot of people tell me, sir, no one wants a quote. No one tells me yes. No, they're telling you no. They're telling you no. You know. I, I get calls from agents and telling me, sir, it's hard to get customers to tell us yes. They're only coming in for taxes. They don't want insurance. I don't care what market you're in. People will tell me yes. I will call your customers and I will get quotes. But why, why would I get a quote for somebody else? Because the way I present it, it's the way we do things, the way we're saying, we make sure that we give you a small things you can tell customers to get customers to say yes. Now, how do I know this works? Well, because just so you know, I physically use these lines. I physically did it, just so you know. It's not made up, I sat behind a computer, oh, this sounds pretty, let me type this up. It's not physically that. I physically did this one. And so, the one of, the, one of them that I, I says, customers say yes, is, this is the one of them says, I believe you're paying too much for auto insurance and I wanna save you some money. If you give me a free minutes, I could run you a free quote. That's one of my best lines ever used. I love it. This is my phenomenal one. I, 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 this is my go-to one all the time. When I first started, there was some down here, which we're gonna cover right now, but by far, this is the best one I've been working for. So as you, as you went through the CMG process yesterday or Wednesday, one of those days, you went over the steps you go with the customer and presenting. You talk about your business, what you're doing, you go out the services and you tell customers, you know, I, I really believe you're paying too much for auto insurance. You know, I really, I really like saving some money. If you want, give me a few minutes, I can run you a few quotes, and I can, I can get back to you on this. And most people will tell me a few things. They'll tell me, oh, I already got insurance. Great, let me record you, I can save you some money. Now, let's say Al tells me, Al, tell me you, you have a good quote. I'm good. You're good? Yes, sir. Oh, so you got a good price where you're at? So, so let me ask, how do you know you have a good quote? I have Geico. You have Geico? Well, let me notice one thing. I, I can beat Geico's prices. Um, just because they've been, they go, they post that they're great, they have the lowest prices, really doesn't mean you have great prices. So let me do this for you. And how about this? If you have a great price, let me quote you. It doesn't hurt, it'll be free. And if I beat you, you let's give me an opportunity to present the quote to you. And if I don't beat you, well, I'm just putting in that you have a really good quote where you're at and I wouldn't touch it. How does that sound? Great. And most people will tell me yes. Like it's, it's, it's in the area where you're at, like that's how you have to present it. If someone tells me I have a good quote, I will be like, how do you know you have a good quote? I've been here for five years. So and then now let's say for example, Al, let's say for example, I'm sorry, what's your name? Joanna. Joanna, you're from Corpus, am I correct? So Joanna, let's say um, on this example, right? I tell you and I go, um, and I want you to quote your insurance and you're like, no, I have good rates. I've been here for five years, okay? So I go, okay, well, you know, you have a good quote. Um, you know, let me run your free quote. But why? You've been there for five years. You have, you have a good rate? So let me ask. So every, so every six months, does your policy keep going up or is it going down? So you've been there for five years. So when you first started, are you paying higher or lower than what you originally paid? Um, higher, a little bit. A little bit higher in five years? I guarantee you're paying a lot higher. I think it's been going up gradually and you thought about it, so I know it's been going up. So how about this? Let me run your free quote. Take me a few minutes, I'll get some information I need and I can run you a quote. Tell me now. Mm, no, it's kind of like a waste of time. No? You think it's a waste of time? Yeah. Well, look, we're talking. You can do some service with me right now. We're gonna talk about some taxes, we do other things right now. But regardless, three minutes will allow me to get some information from you. 
And if you're, if you're, if you're on a time schedule right now where you can't uh, do anything right now, that's fine. How about this? How about I get some information right now from you? I'll just call you tomorrow when you're free and you have more time then. Trust me, what's it going to hurt for me to save you some money? I guarantee you want to save some money for shopping or anything like that. Or those pretty earrings that you have and buy some more. <laughs> yeah, now she's flattered. Now she's like, oh, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> you see. She's like, oh, yeah, you sold me, you sold me. That's exactly what's happening right there. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm down and dirty like that. I'll tell that customer, man, I'm going to get that call. It's going to happen. So you got to use things like that, right? You got to make sure you talk to customers. And she's already like, oh, yeah, more earrings. So you want to get customers. You, you want to get customers to tell you yes. You got to find ways. But it's also just being genuine, making sure you care about the customer and presenting it correctly. You want to make sure you don't you don't you just don't jump right into it and be like, okay, well you're here to taxes. Can I run you free quote? Nope. Okay, check mark. I offered it. Doesn't work that way. You gotta really care about the customer. You gotta really care about what you do, and you gotta really care about saving customer money and presenting it correctly. That's the main one that we use. There's one. There's another one. So when we first started, we have helped thousands of customers save money on their auto insurance. I would love to save you money as well. This is a true fact. Customers come into our location, I will beat about six to seven out of people that come into our locations. I will beat them at any company they come in. And I guarantee I will. Why? Because I know my market. I know they come in from farmers. I know they come from State Farm. They come in from Geico. They come from any company. I know what we can do. So I believe in it. I know my market. I've been doing this for so long. I, I, I know this. So if I know this, when customers come in, trust me, I can say this with passion. I save people thousands of dollars. I'm gonna give you some examples we've got right now, I've got coming up shortly. But overall, when you start when you start quoting your market and you start seeing trends, you're gonna notice when people come in from one location, you're gonna beat them, you're gonna beat them, you're gonna beat them. And that's what you gotta use for testimonies for your clients. You know, you gotta use what you have and use everything that you've gotten, price that you want, and get that and use it to your clients to beat them and tell them, you know what, and use that as testimony to tell the customer. I save customers thousands of dollars. I'm gonna give you an example. A customer came in, he and um, he came in. And he he was paying Geico, and he was paying 500 bucks a month. And it was it was uh, two parents, two parents, uh, one child, and a daughter that was like 24, and he was like 26, so two younger ones, right? And he was like, 500 bucks, it's good. We're minors. We have Geico for like three years. And I'm like, how do you know you got a good price? I'm happy with Geico. I have an app. I have this. It's great, it's perfect. I'm like, look, let me run this for you. Let me run your free quote. And he was like, well, I'm with Geico. As long as you give me the same quote, we'll be fine. Okay, so he was, we're pulling legs back and forth. I went and I ran him with Progressive. From $500, I took his payment to 356. And he was like, well, no, this can't be right. You're doing something wrong. I'm all like, okay, well look, if you feel this is wrong, let me make it easy for you. Let me, you have a, um, since you have Geico, do you have a mobile app? Do you have a login? Yes, great. Log into the computer, get your logins, because you can log into the computer that way, and let's put it on your deck page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match it to what I got. I'm going to compare it. I'm going to show you how we're beating you, how we begin this rate. It was like, okay, we went in there. I printed out the deck page. I went, I went to Progressive. So this is liability. It's what it is. And I show him all the coverages he had. Everything matches. We got you for 356. I ran the MVRs. I ran everything I needed. This is your final price. And he was like, no. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and at the end, we closed that deal. And he sent me a testimony. I have a video of it. He sent me a testimony of it on how much money I saved him. And I saved him 150 bucks a month. Progressive is amazing with minors on the coverage that they can offer. And I know this. And so now that I know this and things that I can do, so when I see customers and I see Geico and I see farmers, I'm there like, my challenge is like, my, well, not my challenge, but I was like, I'm gonna close this deal. I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna find whatever I can do to help this customer. And things like that, testimonies like that, is you can use for other customers. And as you see, I, I mean, I have a lot of testimonies I can give you. I, can, I have books and books of testimonies. I get images. If you see my emails, you can see so many things. But those are the things that you use to hook a customer because when you tell a customer, I say somebody 150 bucks a month, 
150 bucks a month, that's over $2,000 a year. I guarantee you anybody's gonna go ahead and switch or even give, give the opportunity to quote them. Because if I tell you I can save you $2,000, who wouldn't give me a free quote? If, if I tell you I can save you, I'm gonna, I'm, I mean, hypothetically, if I, if I run your quotes and I'm telling you, hey, I'm gonna save you $2,000 a year, would you even think about it? You would think about it? No, you wouldn't, you're gonna switch. I guarantee you're gonna switch quick. Why? Because that's what customers want. Customers wanna know that you care. And when they know that you care and you save the money, then the switch will be a lot easier. So there are small things that you can do to help customers. Um, the next one's gonna be, um, do you think you're paying too much for auto insurance? How many of you think you're paying too much for auto insurance? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> That's right. So e either way, a lot of people believe they're paying too much for auto insurance. So when people believe they're paying too much, it allows the people in doubt, allows you to quote them. Let's go to the next one. Educate your clients. Now, on, the, on this part of the presentation, um, I, I believe a lot of our customers are, how should I say it? They're... They need to be educated more on what policies they have. And this is the reason why I placed this slide in there. Because when customers come in, and Esther was saying earlier, um, you know, how do you get a customer in six months? If they have a one month, two month, or three month, and they want to stay comfortable in that area. So that is true. There are some, there are some customers that they have a comfort zone. They want to stay where they're at, where they're familiar with. But I also do believe that they're never explained why they should get a different kind of policy. It's like their whole life, in the last 10, 15 years, an agent told them you should get a one month policy, it's cheaper. A one month policy is cheaper for 10 years straight. And for some reason, they're getting mad at each other and they decide to go somewhere else. And then they come to us and they believe that one month policy is the best thing for them. And it really isn't. So, you know, that's the reason I believe that we should always educate our clients and making sure that we always let them what's going on. So one thing, um, and once again, with these one month, two month, and three month clients, you're gonna notice that um, some of these people, they, they pay very well, which means that they're gonna come for a, a three month policy. Sorry, Joe. Um, so what, what's happening is that when they come for a three month policy, um, they may pay in full, but these customers may pay late. So I, I kind of like letting people know, um, we'd like to make, we'd like the freedom to have a few more days to make your payments. If they say yes, and then you know going from a one month, two month, or a three month customer, it's very good to put them to a six month because at this point, you know that they're gonna have a grace period with their policy. And that's a few things you can and tell your clients to get them to a, a different kind of policy. Now, also, are you tired of your rates changing every single month? It's another great question because a lot of clients, once again, when they're on a one month policy, every month, the rates can change. It can go from 72, 75, 76, 71. It can fluctuate. I got a I got an email from my uh, one carrier, and the carrier was like, "Hey, we just dropped our rates about two months ago." And then I was like, "Okay, we well, you know. Let's check out the carrier." Well, two days later, I get a rate. I get a I get an email. Rates increase seven percent. 7%, not a one, not a two, not a three, a seven. And I was like, how do you go from a, from a rate decrease to a 7%? So I caught the rep and the rep was like, oh, we, uh, we, 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 we made our rates too low. So we had to do an adjustment on it. So just like that, those customers, they're not gonna see the burden of what's gonna happen on that. So, and the rates are always gonna change. Um, next, we'd like to save some money. Uh, the one month and three month, I'm gonna lie, sometimes it is cheaper than paying three months or six months. Sometimes it is cheaper. Or even a two months. Some of the two months are kind of a really good deals. Um, but overall, the six month policy by far, I believe is the best policy because uh, the one month, two month and three month, customers believe they only have to be there for three months and then they're shopping somewhere else. While they're with you for six months, they feel sometimes committed or you know what, it's right out the six months. And after the six months, they may shop somewhere else. But at the same time, it gives you opportunity to save that customer and to go ahead and uh, record them again and for whatever is going on and so you always want to make sure that the customers that we want not we want yeah basically what we want are the six month customers because those are going to help you build your book of business those are the customers going to stay with you longer those are the customers going to be with you on eft the longest those are the customers that's really going to help you grow and that residual income that y'all looking for to help you 
with your off season, I mean, your planting season to make sure you have employees year round, that is your six month client. Because I promise you, you will not build a business on a one month, two month, or a three month business. You're not gonna build it. You're gonna do so much work for a very small incentive. So just as a point on that part. That's, that's a great question. So the, the service fee is also very hard as well because uh, on these clients, uh, since the premium is so low, you may have a competitor the exact same rate or it may be two or three bucks different. Now, if, it's, if you're $3 uh, a bottle of, um, um, below what the competitor got, are you gonna charge them a service fee? And you charge them 10 bucks, now you're seven bucks over. And then, you know, you as a business owner be like, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I should just, no service fee. Well, then you lose out on the service fee. And then you charge them three bucks. Well, then you're just exactly like the competitor. So that, that market between the month, one month, two month, or three month, it's not, I'm not saying it's the best market. I mean, that's gonna, it's, it's good to help you build business to get other clients. Because I do believe those clients have other clients that may have a six month policy that can get you referrals. And guess what? Those are your very good first week clients in Liberty Tax. <laughs> Those are your great clients. So regardless, it's, a, it's good to have them, but you should not build your business on them. Do you have a set agency fee that you charge? Uh, we have a, the agency fee that we charge, uh, we do a standardized between 30 and 50. Now, between six months and one year, we do between 30 and 50. Now, if it's a one month through three months, we do zero of 10. Zero dollars to 10. Great question. Now, I get this question asked a lot. And the question was, is, how do you know what a deck page looks like? And they ask, well, what's on a deck page? How do you read it? <clears throat> Who does not know how to read a deck page? <coughs> a few of you? Okay, have all of y'all seen auto deck pages before? Kind of gone through them? Okay, great. So maybe your own, if you have any. <laughs> so I want you to go to the, the one that I have for Pronto. So one of the one of the pages that you currently have, it's this deck page right here that you have. Now this is an actual client that we got, and we close we closed them, and the document that we got this is how it looks. Now, the only thing you got to know about the deck pages is what I look at. Uh, bless you, bless you. Uh, the things that I look at in the deck pages is, of course, the bid numbers, um, how many people are in the policy. Also, how much are they paying? That's really, it's really know what kind of they're paying and the, the coverage that they currently have. Now, I noticed, I noticed a lot of competitors, what they do is they throw people in the policy that they don't even know are actually there. For an example, if you get a 26 year old that comes, uh, let's say a 25 year old that goes into your office and wants to buy insurance. And let's say they pull up the address and they find out that mom and maybe grandma lives there as well. They're gonna put the mom or the grandma as a primary and they're gonna put the son just on the policy itself. And they're gonna get them a lower rate without notifying the customer that's going on. So the customer believes he gets a good rate, don't get me wrong. But a lot of people don't understand how to read a deck page. A lot of customers don't know how to read the insurance cards. They just know, I'm insured, I'm here, great. And so the deck page, once again, uh, when we see this, ooh, there it is. Go. So uh, I like to look at just the bid numbers right here, who's on the policy, and of course, the cars that they currently have. Um, because once again, and also the drivers right here in this part, I, I let them know the drivers. Now, you're going to see here that you're going to see they're, they're, this one, they're married. Um, you're going to see a 47 and a 28-year-old. Mm -hmm. mm. So there's... There's a few things on this part. Uh, you know, are they really married or they're really not married? Well, what do y'all think? Not married. Well, you never can tell just by that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying anything. But this is what happens a lot where you may see someone that's 50 and then you see someone that's maybe like 30 or 20 years apart. And then, you know. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, we see this quite a bit. and. So we see a 47 at time. Is it really? And once again, why would someone put two people married? Just cheaper, cheaper discount. So no one, the, the customer doesn't know what you, if you put them as son, child, married. No one knows. 
they're only married on paper. The insurance card paper. Insurance card, let me make that clear. Insurance card paper and yeah, let uh, <laughs> and a, uh, what is it called in a common law marriage state? According to this deck page, these people are now married. Yeah. So as you as you see here, this happens quite a bit. And so overall, a lot of competitors do this. And that's how come when I come and uh, people are coming to me, I let them know. I'm like, oh, so uh, I see that you're married. I'm not married. Oh, sure. Let's go. Let's ask a few questions. Who's, we know who, who the, is it Belinda? Yeah, Belinda. And they're like, well, Belinda, oh, that's my daughter. Oh, really? Huh. So then, you know, that it's a good way to, to talk to customers and let them know on the race that they're getting because people do this. A lot of insurance companies do this. And as you continue going through customers, you'll see eventually it happens quite a bit. So what do you do in that case? I mean, they, they, they got a cheap rate and now you're telling them truth. Well, potentially the insurance company doesn't have to pay the claim because they just committed fraud. I, I, I do what I, I make sure that I file it correctly. If, there, if, I, if I find out that they are married and a daughter or son, I put it married. I mean, I'll put um, single, son, daughter, whatever their filing status is. Now, I would ask, that's a daughter. Okay, that's a daughter. You have a husband. Uh, so, so Robert, let's say, for example, this was going on, right? Let's say Robert, if he's a father and Belinda was a daughter, hey, Robert, does Robert have a wife? Yeah, but she doesn't drive. Great. Let's add her to the policy. Let's exclude her. And then we'll add him as a third child. You know, overall, we want to do what's right. We don't want to be cheating the customers whatsoever. We don't want to be lying because at the end, it's going to hurt us. We don't know. We don't know the percussions of what we can pull. Because, I mean, he said it perfectly right now. What happens if they don't cover that claim? What happens if someone's an accident and someone passes away? And why? Because we decide to save somebody five bucks a month, ten bucks a month. We don't. Hmm? On, the, on the application, they have told us one day. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they told the insurance company another day. And then they re-rate them. They re-rate them. And sometimes it's like double. Yep. And double. So the, the married thing is very important. She said right now. Um, progressive does it as well. Sometimes when you, uh, sometimes when you get a policy of progressive, progressive calls, and they're like, yeah, sure, let me verify some information. So by the way, who's in the policy with you? What kind of relationship are they? And they ask those questions to re-rate um, re the customers. So it does happen quite a bit. So that's one of them for I want you to show you. So I have a question. If they have an accident, is there any consequences for both companies? Yeah. Well, they have to. For the agent, um, not right away, but for the customer, yeah. um, there's a few things. Some carriers, what they'll do is they, um, they'll readjust the rate and they'll may, they may pay the they may pay they may pay out at a prorated rate. So they'll readjust your premium. Whatever the readjustment will be will be the payout minus the readjustment. I've heard that for some of the customers. Um, sometimes I hear where they, they may not pay the claim. Yeah, I heard where they may they may they may, um, they may not pay the claim correct. I knew, I knew about the uh, person saying what uh, partner. They had the partnership between insurance companies. So they went to the jail because um, the problem with the Yeah. So many of them didn't get a claim or they had an accident or exactly. they were insured about something. So, and, and the point that both of them, I mean, one went to the jail, let the guy crashed in Mexico. Yeah. So, um, let me explain one thing as well. Um, state of Texas may be a little bit, oh, well, State of Texas is pretty strict. Uh, but all the carriers have a right to do what they they have their own underwriting rules. In your states, the underwriting rules are different as well. So I can't speak on behalf of all states. But what I can tell you is that just as long as you do it correctly, you'll be fine. And if one of your agents is doing it incorrectly, I mean, all we need to do is coach them, train them, make sure they do it correctly. And eventually, if they do it, continue doing it over and over and over again. Well, eventually, that's between them and the carrier if the carrier wants to um, let them write business. Probably a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and it depends on how many clients you got too and uh, what kind of fraud you're doing. The, and once again, the, 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 uh, the actions can be a, a lot. We just don't know what. Depends on the state. Um, so next, we've got another deck page. Um, this is one of them we got from um, farmers. Uh, as you know, I, I have a lot of farmer deck pages. I like sitting for farmers. In the state of Texas, farmers is not cheap. 
If you ever get a farmer, you can beat them. If you cannot beat them, there's something going on with the coding. I can beat farmers like eight, nine out of 10 times. Farmers is not cheap. So knowing this, I get farmers and I, I just don't hear farmers, give me your deck page. I know it, I'm gonna beat it. And I beat them all the time. Progressive smokes them by far. Um, so here's his customer's information. Um, this one he's paying, I think he's paying. Example that I gave you was uh, $2,316. And then the down payment was 220. When I recorded this customer from 23, uh, 2,300, I took it down to $1,800, $1,800. And on top of this, she had renters and her renters was 700 bucks a year. Wow. Now her renter was 700 and she was in San Antonio. Now I was like, well, I don't know the renters in San Antonio. I know them in our area. So I was like, okay, well, she's like, is it a good cost, a good price? And I was like, well, let me check. So I ran progressive from 700, I took it down to like 402. So I cut down her auto and I cut down her renters and I got her both in the same policies, both for about 2,300, just so you know. So yes, farmer does overcharge. And these are the deck page that you should be looking for. Um, you're gonna see here on this deck page as well. Um, you're gonna see, for example, uh, you're gonna see all the information there, the coverages and all that good stuff. And then you're gonna see auto renters, discounts apply, EFT, and you see all this cool stuff on there. And you can shop with them. Now, um, farmers, um, Allstate. Um, Allstate does this thing. If you see, I, I think Allstate. Has anybody seen a, a Allstate deck page? It's the most funny thing ever. Like I really laugh at what they do. The scandals they do. It's amazing. But, but what they what they do. What was that? No, well, not necessarily a phrase. That the how how they how they work the things for you. So what they'll do, right? Is they get a policy and they'll say they'll say uh, total savings, and then you'll see like new policy. $300 discount and then it says like sign in right whatever it is policy here like and you get like six different discounts And at the end right at the end you get a price for like 2400 and then it, the, like, the total price is like 4,000 like oh my god people actually buy into this like it's just so ridiculous how they do it now I, I think it's really good too I kind of like it but <laughs> I kind of like it but overall it's it's not it's not it's the overall the way they, they put it you can beat them once again that's how the deck pages look very easy. You want to look what kind of vehicles they have, how much they're paying on the side. So the 50 per day, 1,500 per max. You want to look at this. Now, let me ask a question for all of you who write business. I'm going to kind of ask maybe Esther and Jim, right? Does anybody know what the main difference is when someone comes from State Farm, Farmers? What's one thing in common that you may see across all those policies? And, and yeah, me too. There's something, there's something different that most have in common. Different that they have in common. In regards to what? The, the, the coverages. I'm just about to say the VIN number. <laughs> so let me give you a clue. Farmers, State Farm, Allstate, um, Geico, what they do is they start off everybody at a higher bodily limits, um, limits. Farmers, I mean, so all state farmers, they start you off like 100, 300, 100, all across the board. Limits. I, I get people, I get people's policy and they have like a, a 300,000 hot policy. I'm like, ah, damn. I'm like, are you a homeowner? No, I'm renting. <laughs> like really, like they start up very high limits. Eat. Yeah, I didn't. What's your? Um, you're from where? Corpus. I did not even know her. And look, she's agreeing with me. <laughs> See, look, yeah. that's what they that's do. Yeah. So every farmers all state, they start you off at a hundred, three hundred, one hundred, or three hundred, um, whatever's next above it. They start you at higher limits. But why is that bad? Or why are you saying what? Well, let, let me explain. Let me explain to you the reason why. Is because a lot of people that come in come from progressive or anything like that. Um, they get thrown into that without being told they have higher limits. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but do you, would you know the reason why to have higher limits? So the reason why you should have higher limits is when you're when you have more assets at risk. If you're a homeowner, yes, you should have it. If you have if you have um, if you have a bigger family, you're making more money. Yes, you should have it. But when you're getting someone that's at home and then just let me start let me phrase that when you get someone that's just renting, no, they shouldn't have those high limits. It's too high for certain people. 
And what's happening is they're charging people extra premium that they, they didn't, really don't need. They're, they're getting the bang for the buck. It's good for them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about it. But what's happening is that people come to us and like, I want to match my limits. So then how are you going to quote somebody? Then you're quoting somebody and you're, you're, they're like, I want the same limits. I mean, are you going to explain to them? Well, they have a hundred thousand, 3000, and then you're quoting them with 36 to 25. How are you going to explain to a customer? Like, see that that's the point where it's not about, it's not about them just defaulting out of it. Just, they're just not explaining that they're on those limits. So this customer that she's on, she, uh, uh, she had a, was it this one or the other one? Let me see. So this customer, she had a hundred, 300,000. So I was talking to her and I was like, so you have a hundred, 300,000. She's like, what does that mean? Oh, if you're cracked and they'll pay it to a hundred thousand. She's like, why so high? I'm like, it's what they have you at. And they also have everybody in the vehicle be 300,000. And you're also, your, your physical damage for the, the property damage is 100,000, which goes to the vehicle. She's like, 100,000 pays to their vehicle? She's like, what would be cover me? Well, if they have statement on limits of 30, 60, 20, 30, 60, 25, you're covered for 25,000. She's like, so I'm paying $100,000 for someone else's vehicle? I'm like, so she limits her for. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, but I'm renting. I'm like, you really don't need these high limits. I promise you, you don't. I'm like, honestly, I, I think a good limits for depends on, um, how much money you have and the house and all that, right? Fifty hundred is pretty good, you know. And and of course, I mean the territory we're at, fifty hundred is pretty good. Now, if you have a home, you have more assets, fine, go to hundred, three hundred. But every single customer, someone just renting, it's really excessive. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. So, but, um, so anyway, so that that's what happens. And so you can quote people more, but it's not about just quoting. It's how do you explain to a customer? No, I can explain to a customer. Can you? Can your agents explain this? And and you know when some bless you, when someone comes in and they get these limits, you know you got to persuade somebody from going from uh, another standard care to get you to progressive. And you got to be very fluent in, 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 in the in the insurance lingual to make sure that you explain it very well to the customer. So now we're gonna go to the fun parts. So we're gonna go over the this, all these forms that we're gonna be hitting up next. So these forms that we got right here, we're gonna go over the FAST app, auto, auto policy checklist, we're here to help, consent form, the release of liability, and the freedom private policy. So, excuse me. So the first one, we're gonna go over the FAST app. Has anybody seen our new and approved FAST app? Raise your hand. Yes. You saw them yesterday? Great. So. This new fast app that we have, it's really so you can get everything you want on one one time. Uh, I, I noticed where I, I noticed where you can an agent will call a customer and then I'll tell the customer, I'll tell the agent, okay, let's call a customer and run them a quote. Hey, by the way, I don't see they're homeowners. I didn't ask if they're homeowners. Okay. Oh. No, did they want do they want uh, to be on EFT? I didn't ask if they want to be on EFT. And then I ask, okay, well, what did you ask? <laughs> what did you ask? And then they get the basic information. Yes, Robert. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't put it on this one because Karen gave you three yesterday. That's right. I'm sorry. That's why I wasn't on there. Um, so you got three yesterday from Karen. That's the same fast that. I don't want to put extra because you already had quite a bit. Um, so the the questions that i designed when we started calling our customers in january because as you know i had nadia and i had uh, maria that were helping um they were calling customers and i'll have color i'll have them call back customers again asking for more information and it wasn't it wasn't pleasant for me calling back a customer hey we need this information hey let's call you back again because i missed it the first time and then you got to come the third time and offer pricing and quoting and then they don't have the account information in front of them uh bless you and then you got to call back another time. Sometimes you got three or four times and it's a very inconvenient for the customer. Bless you. So what we'll do, um, what we'll do is we, we made this fast app to do everything on one opportunity. And the fast app, if you have it in front of you or you see on the screen as well, um, these are all the questions you need. And I promise you with one, bless you, with one call, you can get all the information that you need. And that's how come these three questions are right here on top. Um, proof of prior, homeowners and EFT. As you notice, every carrier, no matter what carrier it is, offer you those three discounts, which are the most important discounts. Um, right here, what coverages they're requesting. 
Um, you got the, the primary driver and the secondary driver, and you got these questions that are being asked here. Now, the current payment. Uh, let's go with uh, Robert. Yeah, so Robert, why do you think it's important to us as a customer how much you're currently paying? Why does it matter to us? Well, I mean, well, why does it matter to you? It matters to me because I want to know if, based on what uh, coverages we're going to match, I want to make sure we're beating um, the agreement we need. You know, we, we input everything from the prorator, so it's pretty much going to bring us down, you know, the CD that or the rest of or Gates or any of those is beating them, but we know which way to go. Yeah, exactly. And exactly what's happening is that, you know, someone's going, if there's someone's paying 200 bucks, someone's paying 200 bucks and you want to quote them, hey, I got a great price for you. I got you at 250. <laughs> you just wasted all your time for nothing. And another thing is that, you know, if you know they're paying $200 on a basic, uh, I guess we call it basic full coverage, and with progressive, you know, for example, you're at $200 with the uninsured waters, if we already offer you more for what they're paying for right now. Exactly. An agent having issues on the presentation. Got it. Okay, so you're totally right. And let me tell you one thing. You want to know what to say on your follow-up call. If, if, if I want to call somebody, I'm going to let them know that I'm losing. I want to be ready for that. And trust me, I've called people before and I tell them, hey, you're very good at where you're at. I, I'm right now with the carriers that I got. Unfortunately, I can't beat you. But I do thank you for giving me an opportunity to get you running your free quote. And, but you know what, just so you know, you're good where you're at. I don't want to switch you. You're just, you're good. But I do thank you for the opportunity. But you know what, how about this? Um, I, I may not be to an auto, but I, I may be affordable in other areas such as auto, I mean, in home, in life, or just maybe in taxes, you haven't done your taxes here with us yet. And just so you know, I'm always getting new carriers. And if I get another carrier that may be more affordable at one time, then what I can do is I can record you and give you a call back and let know how much you're paying at this point. I even gone as far as um, if I'm already beating the the uh, the quote that the payment is paying now, you know, and I have twenty thirty dollars room, you know, I pretty much say, hey, you know what, I have the same coverage as what you have with farmers, for example. But this when we progress, so we can also add you a, a firm license. Exactly. You know, so the same price that you're paying for whatever you do. And and you you will see that would happen, um, and that's correct on that part. You want to try to upsell them. Hey, you know what? You're paying more, but with more coverage. Now, so the fast up is very important. What we did in the back as well. We put the has any, does anybody have anybody use this part on the fast app? Have I used it? No, Jim used it. What what you think about it? You liked it. Uh, tell me what you like about it, or was it easy to use? It, well, I think it was a little confusing, but it was good. Uh, but it, I think it's a little bit easier than what we were doing. But I think it was a little more often. Exactly. And at this point, what you'll see, what you'll see is that uh, you can, the, the thing that's just great is because you can write information here, you can call the customer without logging into the carrier. So let's say, let's say Joe comes to the office and Joe calls me, hey George, um, so I got a call from a quote, maybe I'm training a phone call. Joe's gonna be like, what's your name? George Nino. Okay, then Joe tells me, well, you got my quote ready? Well, Joe, do you know what quote they gave you? No, I don't know what quote they gave me. So then I'm like, give me one second, Joe. I go back, right? How would I know what I quote a Joe? If you do the first fast app, right? How, how would I know which carrier Joe was on? How would I know which one did he like or which price I was gonna to present to him? There's no way for me to know. So then I'm going through the system. Hey Joe, how about this? Hey, let me look for it. I'm real sorry about this. The girls who do it are out to lunch, right? But let me call you back in a few minutes and um, is that okay? Yeah, sure, call you back. Hey girls, you call them back. Hey, what's going on? And then you do the whole quote and you go through the system, you find it, hey Joe, you see how the extra step, it just delays the process. It's very disorganized. You don't want that. So now what we do is we get the fast app, we call for Joe, Joe calls, we get it. Hey Joe, yeah, sure, let me check, give me one second. Pull up the fast app, look at the back. Okay, look, I see you got progressive here and we got you surprised for the dollar mom, this, what do you think? And then continue with itself from there. And at the same time that I put up the carrier, I can log into the system to double check, to make sure everything's fine. If I need any questions asked, it can be asked.
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a customer's call to the quote. So can everybody take out the fast app, please? Did everybody get their fast apps, the one that Karen gave you? No. You don't have that either? Okay, great. That's fine, we'll do this, we'll do this. Um, so what we're gonna do is, let's say for example, so we went over it, right? Now, customer gives you this info. Now, let's say customer calls over the phone. Now, Mato, have you had anybody, you, you high five. You're a rock star. I should get yeah. one of those figures. Get a flow. So let me ask you. Mato, do you get customers that call into your office and be like, hey, I want to quote over the phone? Yeah? So uh, do you use a fast app? Okay. Uh, so let's say, for example, a customer calls, what information do they give you over the phone? Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> well, what information did they give you over the phone? Everything. And the vehicle information, probably. The VIN number and all that. Yeah. Um, most people give you very minimal information. Name, phone number, address, you know, vehicle information, uh, driver licenses, and pretty much that's it, and coverages. Very easy, very basic. A lot of things are missing. And um, that's honestly what most people give over the phone. Now, if they're agents, just, they're just, what, how should I say it? They just do what they're told. Hey, I'm only gonna give you this. There are gonna be a lot of callbacks afterwards. So what we do is go, hey, follow the fast app, ask these questions, and you always get it right. So by this going on, what are they missing? <laughs> what questions are we missing to get a really good quote? Bless you. Uh, the vehicle, they're missing uh, where they work. Uh, what they're, what they're, uh, where, where you work, that's for progressive, but overall. Oh. It's a good one, though. Oh, do they have prior insurance? Marital status. Prior insurance? Prior marital prior status? Prior prior no prior homeowners? Other insureds? Price. Price? Good. And that's exactly what's, what's happening. Whew, time to get to it. Okay, so that's what's going on. So some of these get missed, and customer's information is missing email. <laughs> Prior info, current amount paid, if any coverages, as for discounts, uh, how long they've been insured, other insurers, is all great answers. Now, you're gonna see here email. I harp on email every single day. Does anybody know why email is so important? Marketing tool follow up. Now, if you're in the Liberty, and you know the Liberty system, we, we get emails all the time. And um, how, many, how many people are really good at collecting emails from clients? They're really good at it? What about your staff? <laughs> Every, it's another story. So, honestly, I, when I first started, I was never big on emails either. I'll be like, I always do that none at gmail.com. I don't know if y'all do that, but I'm real big at none at gmail.com. And I always, um, what I always do was, you know, there's so much opportunity in emails. And not, not only emails, but there's a lot of features that's going to be coming out pretty soon that I'm going to be rolling out that the emails is really important to collect and their correct phone numbers. And that's one thing that's being missed at a really big opportunity. And those features, I don't wanna talk about them yet, but it's gonna be huge. You're gonna be very, very impressed because I'm impressed. And well, I guess I get impressed for everything, but yeah. <laughs> but overall, the email's gonna be a big old thing. So make it a habit to collect emails because I promise you in the next month or two, it's gonna make a very big difference on the way we do business and the way we interact with our customers. Um, so next, uh, with the auto policy checklist that we got, the auto policy checklist is the colorful one. Um, this is basically for one of your new agents. They can tend to be a little newer, um, kind of get the flow of things. Um, this is a checklist what to do from beginning to end. And you're going to see how to quote a customer, get the information, binding, uh, bridge to the carrier, and enter into the sales lot. Now, for newer agents, I mean, you go through this in a heartbeat. You don't really need this. But it's good to have a checklist to know what you do from beginning to end and to make sure all your agents are following the steps. We're here to help. Um, so during, um, right now, since the tax season is over, uh, we, we want to make sure that we can help our clients as much as possible and, and actually cross out to our clients, call them, text message them, email our clients. In order to do that, we need the permission. And that's basically what this form does. That allows you to go ahead and call your customers, email your clients, text your clients, all that good stuff, but you need them to get to sign this document. Um, so once again, it's where to help. And so some ways to say this 
uh, well, in the in the in the tax season, all you have to do is just slip the form and all of the form that you'd be signed. Hey, sign this document and you're fine. Did it replace the consent to disclose? No. Well, in, in the consent to disclose in the liberty system, um, are you in the taxes you're already doing it, so that replaced this. That's correct. Okay. But right now we're not finding no more taxes that much. Uh, and if customers come in only for insurance, well, they probably won't see that consent to use because well, they're not following the tax side. So this is the form that's gonna replace it if they're not doing the taxes for the meantime. And this is the form that you need to sign. So usually on this form, when they come in, um, I just tell the customer, so this document let me know that I can go and call you about your the insurance products and let you know what we can do for you. And we can just get your authorization to give you a call. Okay, sign it and then done. Easy. The more you talk about it, the more you're gonna make a big thing out of it. Trust me, just tell the customer, just give you a call. Did you get insurance with us? Since we're a tech business, we don't want to call you on the insurance side. Easy, straight to the point. Now we got the consent form and the release of liability, which Mark, you were saying earlier. On this form, do we need permission? I, now for the consent form, we need to get permission, letting them know that we are charging them an agency fee. Now th these forms are very huge. This form, you're gonna see it for auto, home, and commercial, Auto, home, and commercial. All the lines of business are exact same form. So on this one, the, the consent form on the left side, if you charge anybody any kind of an agency fee or a service fee, a processing fee, a fee of any kind, you know, you piss me off fee, whatever fee that is, right? That fee, they need to be signed right there, letting them know that you're charging them that fee. And instead of the state of Texas, in the state of Texas, it's mandatory to disclose it to the customer. So you have to make sure you get this document. Now, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna fill this information there, type of customer's information, and have them sign in date. Uh, the release of liability. Most of you know that, um, Lee was talking about it, she, didn't, she did not get into it as much, but the release of liability is in a very important form. Now, let me give an example. Uh, let's say, for example, let me see, let me see Al. Uh, let's say Al comes in, he writes policy. And the customer goes, I want full coverage. And I'll goes, okay, it's complaint collision. He's like, yeah, I want to be protected for anybody who doesn't have insurance, towing, rental, and all that good stuff. And then I'll goes, okay, he writes the policy. He only writes full coverage because of what the customer said originally, and he didn't add anything else. So now he goes in, he rejects, uh, he rejects uninsured motorists, he rejects all that good stuff, and he sends it off. Customer gets in a car accident, and now customer goes, hey, well, hey, I'll you know, I want a full coverage, so I want everything covered. So I want I want roadside assistance. Open the policy. Hey, you don't got no roadside assistance. What do you mean? I want a full coverage. He's like, I just found out guy doesn't have insurance either. Well, what happens then? So I was gonna tell the customer, well, I'm not, and you're not gonna remember every single customer that walks into your door. So what are you gonna say? Well, this is the coverage you told me when you came into my location. Am I correct? No, even if your agent does that, you're going to tell your agent well, this is what the agent got and what, what you wrote the policy for. Why? Because regardless of what you say, it's already there. Whatever happened, happened. So now the customer goes, okay, you get a lawyer, they sue. Uh, now the lawyer was sued. Now they're going to be like, okay, well, they see, they prove the documents that, uh, that you rejected the uninsured motorist and all that stuff. And then Al goes, okay, we'll provide the e-signatures. So you submit, you submit the e-signature forms and then the customer goes, I didn't sign it. I'll, I'll never turn the computer to me. I'll just kind of just told me to do it. He did it for himself. And the customer goes, okay. So the release of liability, what this form does, it makes them physically sign here and there that they're acknowledging that they're physically rejected it as an extra coverage for it. Because if Al forgets to do the e-signatures or they have an issue with e-signatures, this is another way to cover him. Because now Al, if they win, what they're gonna do is they're gonna be like, okay Al, or they're gonna be Al, well, your e-signatures are not valid because the customer says different. And so you owe $10,000. So those eyes that you gave me is like, how many zeros? <laughs> how many? So you owe $10,000. What would you do now? Now, now you got to call your ENO and you got to let your ENO, hey, there's a, there's a claim. You got to pay that claim. Now you call your ENO, claim goes up and blah, 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 blah from there forward. It's a big old issue. 
Does everybody see that happening? Imagine 50, 100 people walking through your door, closing policies. Now, do you trust, are you prepared to do this 100%? Do you think, do you think your agents are 100% asking all the questions, being amazing agents and asking and explaining everything to the customer, and when they leave, they know everything? This is a very big risk, it's a huge risk, and you have to explain it very well. Um, and I have, there's, there's like a, there's a video on both of these. There's like about a minute or two minutes each explaining it and explaining how to explain it to a customer. So just make sure you get a sign, please. Um, and now for the home insurance, you're going to see the rejection for um, replacement costs in there, which we'll explain a little bit later. Any questions on this? No? Great. Got an amazing class. <laughs> so the freedom, private, uh, the, the freedom privacy policy form, letting it know. Everything you do with us, confidential, we don't give your information out. Boom, done, give it to the customer, easy. Don't harp on it. Uh, we, we're gonna, we were gonna, we were gonna go do a live Turbo Raider, a uh, live Turbo Raider uh, demo, uh, but due to the time we're gonna continue, um, I do have, and I know some of you, most of you attend my Turbo Raider in the morning, so we're good on this. If you, if you haven't attended my Turbo Raider training, my live one, I encourage you to attend it, I encourage you to take a lot of notes, and I encourage you to really understand it. If you do not understand Turbo Raider, you do not know it in and out, you're not quoting correctly. You're doing a lot of work, double work, than what you should. Does the Turbo Raider have a progressive in there? Uh, doesn't have flow, but yes, it does have progressive in there. Sorry, okay. yeah. the yes, that's all in there. All there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so everything you have on progressive, and my Turbo Raiders, I did talk about progressive in there as well. So, um, this paperwork, once again, a lot of people ask me, well, George, how do you file your paperwork? Where do you put all the stuff at? What do you do with this? What do you do with that? I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm, I'm a very, how should I say this? No, no. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to. Um, yeah. And she tries to cover it in a good way, though, in a good way. <laughs> uh, I'm going <laughs> to. I'm gonna say one thing, but um, that, that made me laugh. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, um, so I'll tell you one thing, these documents, um, I, I love these signatures. I love these signatures. I don't like having paper. Paper really, yes, I'm very anal about it. I, I, I don't like paper. Um, E-signatures is, is the way to go. There's a very few carriers that offer wet signatures, a very few, but all you have to do is get them, upload them, and you can shred everything right away. I'm a big, I'm a big not have paper kind of guy. Okay, so if you get, if you get the consent forms, get them, upload them, shred them, get them, upload them, shred them, get them, upload them, shred them, and that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm not this guy that's gonna go in the back. Oh, you got something from 20 years ago? Yeah, I'm gonna go to my filing cabinet. No, no, I'm not that guy, right? I'm like, okay, let me look at my database. Sorry, I'm gonna look for it. That's the kind of the, the, how we operate. Because if you do that now, from 10 clients, 20 clients, I promise you, when you get a thousand. It's a lot easier. So you got to make habits now when doing that. So most carriers offer Eason, I mean, everything electronic. So you don't really need documentation for any clients. Just so you know, we've been doing this for years and our packets for our customers in our office is very, very minimum. Very, very minimum. So if I can have very minimum paperwork in our offices, I know you can as well. Now, I'm not saying you have to, if you want to be the, you want to be a, go to the, the book and that's your option. But the consent forms, upload them. I have a question for you. What, what are you doing with the documents over there? Uh, the, the documents, I think it's three to five years, some on there. I don't know exactly, but I can get back with you. When, when, you, when, you, when you upload them to the carrier, the carrier make their own copy. And if you ever need it, you can go back and you can reopen it. Exactly. No. So let's say, for example, let's say you have it with, let's say one carrier that we have, it's called Snap. Um, when you upload it to Snap, Snap will always carry it for you. So let's say, for example, once you, once you upload it, let's say six months or one year down the road, the documents, you're never going to need them because the carrier, what they're going to do is they're going to be like, hey, we needed this file. It was in your file, so you don't need to know anything. You just got to know what's going on in the background. That's it. So you, the carriers do not hassle you for anything unless you did not upload it. No, I understand that. But you, you, but you were saying that in three to five years, the carrier will have to put that document. Yeah. Uh, 
I, we, we never had an issue where that ever happened. Um, honestly, it's never happened to us. So honestly, we don't say them anywhere because of it. I, I, I don't, I, we never, no one cares ever done that to us before. Yeah. So how did you know how was the, the tank? Yeah. Okay, give me one. Get, well, okay, let's go to the questions. Right, go first. So uh, how do you know how long that carrier is going to have a copy of that before getting rid of it versus you having it somewhere where if a client says, oh, remember I used to have, which insurance I used to have in the past? Can you give me a record of it? Good so, question. You, you, that's not going to happen. So the, the documents that you sign, the documents you sign, customers are looking for an insurance card or a declaration page. They're not looking for something they're physically going to sign. And, and just so you know, if a customer goes, I, I did an insurance five years ago, how, how many of you ever gone to somewhere and needed an insurance card from five years ago? Oh. You did? I'm like, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> you did. So only because I've had my insurances last 15, 20 years. So I, then they ask me, who was your previous carrier? And I'm like, uh, I can find out. So I go to, I used to have Allstate, so I go to Allstate and they're like, uh. But that, that's, with, and that's with anybody else. I mean, if you come and you ask me, hey, what's going on for 10 years ago? I have no idea, but I can send an email to the carrier and they'll get it for you. I mean, that's, that, my job isn't to keep all the files. That's their job. That's the carrier's job to do that. If you need something from five years ago, I don't got it. Well, I'm not going to stress myself over it. Hey, I'm going to send an email to the carrier. Hey, they need something from five years ago for this going on. Can you please issue it to the client? And they will do the research and they will send it to you. Because it's the carrier's job to keep copies of your documentation. Right. So send you that yeah. letter of experience. Yeah. Like, your, our, our job isn't to keep every single file or the policy or anything like that. Our job is to make sure we only keep the documents that we need. Uh, documents that we need to cover ourselves is a consent form and the release of liability. And that isn't for the carrier. The carrier doesn't say you need this. That's our form because if you get in a lawsuit, you want to present it to the lawyers. Hey, I'm covered. The carrier doesn't care about the consent form. The carrier doesn't care about that. So for how long do you keep it in the upload? It's in our drive. We just leave it there. We've been in for four years and we still got things there for four years ago. I mean, it's just in a drive and we're going to keep it. And year after year, we're going to continue going. Now, how long are we going to keep it? I mean, I don't know. We've been here for four years and we still have them. So we're just going to continue keeping them. And eventually when time comes up, we'll know. And I don't know how long we're supposed to keep them, but we just have them in a drive. And I promise you, I'll go back to 2014 and see how many we have. <laughs> we, we have a Google Drive. And just so you know, your Google Drive is on your portals. And that's where we're going to upload all the forms to. That's correct. It's on your Google Drive and your file. Just upload them to CRM and you'll be fine from there. Also in the state that you're in. Exactly. Everyone has their own rules and regulations. I'm um, honestly, I don't harp on how long I should have it. I just put in a file and just never look at it again. This is really what it is. It's really what it's going to be. I mean, because I mean, well, I'm not going to stress. I mean, like you're really going to stress over, I spent that for five years. Let me what I do with this next. I got bigger things to worry about. Just put in a file. And that's what the cloud's for. It saves it for me. So, yeah. I mean, that's the way I think. And that's what we think about the, the paper thing. If you, I'm, I'm assuming you're very good with paper, keeping things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have suffered Yeah. Keep it in 10 years? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, let me go to this side of the office. <laughs> so, okay, good. Great questions. Any other question as well? No? Yeah, trust me, you shouldn't harp on things like that. Those are those are the less things you should be worrying about. I promise you. Yeah. I had a client and somehow she was on, I guess, probation for too many traffic tickets. Oh. And they um, she had to prove that she needed um, coverage or that she's had continuous coverage for the last two years or something. And I didn't have that like right there, but I we called the carriers because she had at two different carriers with it was in our um, agency. And we called each carrier. They faxed over a customer letter of experience. And that was it. Yep. Um, Trust me. She said she had coverage from January 1st, 2015 through December 2018 or whatever the dates were. So that's what that's for. Yeah, I promise you. This, those things you shouldn't be worried about. I promise you. Um, and carriers can do this for us. That's why we pay them. <laughs> we pay them to take care of stuff like that for us. So good questions. Um, so next. Uh, next is going to be, once again, the forms. You upload to the cloud, you'll be totally fine from that from here forward. Uh, there's a few carriers that offer wet signatures. Um, I really believe, and I haven't been proven wrong, that's four years, but every time I upload something, they got their copies. 
And I never had someone tell me the last copy before. So uh, these are the copies that you need. Uh, once again, at every office, it determines a little bit different by state as well. Now, the thing we're gonna talk about how to get more leads. Um, on this presentation, on this part, um, I hear a lot, a lot of um, a, a lot of franchisees will tell me, no, George, how do I get more customers? How do I post more on Facebook? I, I want leads coming from Facebook every single time. I want you to post for us. I want you to do this. I want, I want 10,000 likes in our thing and all these comments and, you know, coming in. And I'm like, okay, have you called your local customers? No. Okay. Have you called your parents, your sisters? Oh, no. Okay. Um, have you called your friends and family, people on Facebook? No. Why are you looking on Facebook then? <laughs> That's where you should be focusing your market. Let me ask. Um, anybody wants to give a random number how many friends they have on Facebook? Yeah. 500? 1,000? 300? Yeah. Oh, no. I, well, I have, I have like 3,000. <laughs> I have like 3,000. Anybody else have a different number? You have like 3,000? Your mom is an off 3,000, man. <laughs> nah, but, but even though, look, 3,000 people on Facebook, 500. Okay, five, let's say 500. Let's say you have 500. You have five employees. That 2,500 people you have at your fingertips that you can touch business with. Why are you focusing on spending money on ads when you don't have to? You got 2,500 people you can post for free. And not only that, not only that, I, I'm very, and I, I don't know who I was talking to last time about this, but for me, it's all about going back to the basics. To start from the very, be very beginning, you need to focus on visibility. That is one game changer that we did that changed our business completely. We went from one office, uh, so I, we had one location here in Harnage and Maine. It was open for like five, six years. And they were writing, they're actually the number one producing agent we have at the time. They're writing about $15,000 about two, three years ago. Um, and they were doing about 15000 Now, at this point, we opened a new location in, in Brownsville. Now, in Brownsville, we opened one location. The very first year, we opened around December. That year, we did about 300 returns at the end of the year. We closed it down. For the for the for the off season for the planning season, we reopened it three weeks later. For being closed for three weeks, we opened it in May. In three months, that office was making twenty thousand dollars in premium. In three months, why is that? How did an office from first being open ever in insurance and in a tax be an office been open for about seven years, six years? Uh, did I tell you a story? Oh, I knew I told somebody a story. I told you a story too. Oh, oh I, I told the class? Oh, okay. I, I might still something. I say the story all the time. So, um, so what we did was we just start changing our, our, our focus. Our visibility was a lot smaller. We had like one sign, $20. Something. You know what? We focused a lot on focusing a lot on taxes, you know, W2, you know, uh, fast and and all that. I'm going to take all that down. Take it all down. We put um, $26. We, we put big. Um, four by uh, four by sixes outside. We put four by fours. Uh, we we put four by fours and four by sixes outside. Like we just went off on this visibility part, and all of a sudden, we had a customer walking through the door. Then we got two customers walking through the door. Then all of a sudden, we're like, you know what? Let's go to the flea market. We're in the flea market, and all of a sudden, we're dropping flowers like this. Now, for the first week and a half, no customers walking through our door. Like it was dead. But you know what? We're passing out flyers like crazy. We're passing out flyers. We're doing everything. All of a sudden, people start calling. And the business started rolling really quick. But what, what changed? The only thing that changed is our visibility and our marketing. That was the only thing that changed. And though this is the only thing I said that's kind of weird about taxes and insurance is that when you go to taxes, has anybody dropped off door hangers before? Flyers? Did those really work for you? Yes. Eh, some did. I'll tell you one thing. For some reason, I passed out. We passed out thousands of door hangers. I never, I saw like three came in. I, it's just, I, I don't see big returns on them. Well, we passed a lot of flyers on taxes, nothing came in. Well, the insurance was different. Have you ever, uh, I don't know if you've seen our flyers, but we have them flyers and we have like, a, if you look at it, you see like $26, like really big on there, right? Anyways, we started passing them on the flea market. People would come back to our office with the flyer and be like, hey, we got, we got $26 insurance and people would bring it by. And I was like, man, I see more results in insurance than taxes. And so, by doing that so much, hitting the flea market every single week, 
we increased that office by a lot. Now that office is open year round. Now that office, just so you know how, how long it, we, we, we hit it for a year straight. At the time, at that time, we're off on weekends. We're off Saturdays and Sundays. And I went to the manager, hey, you wanna work year round? Like, yeah, we gotta do what other people are not willing to do. Let's work every Saturday and let's hit the fee market. And every Saturday we're there from 10 to about 2 p.m. And we're hitting the fee market. And then I'm like, you know what? Let's go at nine, nine and two. We're in nine and two. And every Saturday that we're off, we're hitting that flea market for the whole year. Now we, we miss we missed trips when we were end up going out kind of late some weekends. <laughs> some going out, take trips or what was going on. We missed weekends. But overall, we kept hitting over and over again. We grew our business. And now that insurance, that office does very well. That's all you have to do. Now, some, some flea markets and southern markets, they just maybe got to tap into them. I mean, that's just worked very well for us. Now, here in, in, in the southern Texas, uh, we have a, a one in Brownsville. We have one in Alamo as well, or Donna, somewhere not direct. I think it's Alamo. So we have two flea markets that do pretty good for us. That gets thousands and thousands of people. You got to find out in your market what is good for you. Is it a flea market? Is it a local event? Is it a barbecue event? Is it a family event? Uh, in Brownsville, bless you. Uh, in Brownsville, every month they do a movies in the park, and the movies in the park they play. They play. They last time we went, they played Life of Pets. I think it was Secret Life of Pets, and they have a bunch of vendors that are there, and they play the movie for the kids, and everybody's buying food and doing things like that. Those are fun events you can be at. It doesn't matter what you do; it just matters that you're out there showing what you're doing and trying to get customers. Because I promise you, if you get ten leads, that's ten leads you do not have. And that's something that we really focus on. And so the, the, that was one, attending local events, uh, post on social media, uh, you know, just post on your regular Facebook. You know, you don't have to post every day, three times a day. Hey, I do auto insurance. I do auto insurance. I do auto insurance. I do auto insurance. Post testimonies. Hey, we went, we quoted, we did this policy. We're, we're, we're saving, I say someone $600 a year. No, let me get your free quote. Let people know what you're doing. Talk to people over Facebook. Don't just post things and be like, hey, come see me. Post people, have interactions with them. Um, asking referrals and calling your customers. Uh, so I want to kind of say this. Uh, so we, I have an agent. Uh, well, I had someone that's working and they were out for about a few months because they had, they, she had a baby. And okay, so she hasn't been with us for this whole tax season. Uh, so she came back afterwards. And I, I didn't know she came back. Um, all I knew that there was a, there was a manager in the Brownsville store. Um, so I was like, okay. So I get a phone call. I get a phone call and it says, hey, we're looking for Gianna Galvan. That's my mother. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, we're coming from Liberty Tax and Freedom Insurance. I'm like, yes. And they're like, and this is what they said. I want to run a free auto quote with you. I, I want to run a free auto quote with you. Like right into it. They didn't even warm me up. And I was like, uh, I was like, um, no, I, I got, I got a, I already got insurance. Um, um, I can save you some money. And I was like, really, you can? I'm just like, yeah. And I was like, I think I got a good rate. How much do you pay? I'm paying for 110. Uh, how many vehicles? Three. 110 for three vehicles? Nah, that actually is a good rate. I'm like, oh, like, oh. So there was a Nadia in front of me. I'm like, oh, I was here flipping out, right? And I was like, okay, George, breathe. And I'm like, oh, and I go, so yeah, I do got a good rate. And she was like, yeah, they told me I got a good rate. And she was like, huh. Well, would you want me to run your free quote? And I was like, uh, no, I'm actually good, man. Okay, if you need to let us go, we'll call me back. And I hung up, man, I totally flipped out. I totally flipped out. And this was like, I'm not even joking, it happened like a month ago. And I was like, okay, let me, give me 10 minutes before I call the pair. Let me call 10 minutes before I call the pair. And so I thought it was one of my managers and I was like, my manager's doing this? Oh my God. I'm like, so I called her, I'm like, who's working? And then she's like, uh, she told me her name. I'm like, oh, you're back? And she was like, yeah. I, just, uh, I go, how's your baby by the way? She's like, oh, he's doing great in this. Okay, now take a seat. Now take a seat. Let's talk. <laughs> so we talked and I explained everything. I go, look, so you called right now, Diana Galvan. She's like, how'd you know? That was me on the line. She's like, oh, I'm like, so you did some calls. We walked through it and she was like, so let me kind of give you a coaching on the call. And I, and I kind of reworked the whole call to her. So look, this is what you should say. Do you have the script? 
well, I just got back. I don't have a script. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? So we went through the whole thing. I'm like, look, honestly, your call was like the, the worst of worst calls. Um, and I really feel like if we didn't give you the information to you right away because you just got back, I kind of understand. But you've been with us for over a year. This is really unacceptable why you're doing this. Like, it should be more empathy towards the call. Like, I mean, you should know so many things already. And maybe that's why they didn't give it to you because they, they should expect more from you. And I expect more from you. And we talked about it and everything. And she was like, okay. So we coached her. She's a lot better now. Um, but overall, the reason I'm sharing this experience with you is because even us, we see things like that. Just so you know. And it's not about terminating people. It's not about terminating people. It's about making sure that our prepared, our people are doing it correctly. And a lot of people do this thing. Call customers. Check mark. I caught some people today. But how effectively did they call those people? Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people go, did you call 10 people? Hey, did you call 10 people? Great, we call 10 people. People don't do it effectively. And then people tell us, it ain't working. What do you mean it ain't working? It works. It ain't working, our customers are not biting. No, they're not biting you. It works. And that, that's what I tell people. Going back to the basics, the fundamentals, you got to understand how to call customers. you got to understand call your warm market and call your 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 market afterwards, call your customers, call your friends, call your family, and then tackle your local customers. Um, some of you are already past that. So if someone's been here longer, like Jim, you know, models have been here longer, you know, Oscar, you probably already called your customers. They probably don't want to hear you no more. And I get it because that's how our customers are too. You know, sometimes we call our customers, we hang, we, uh, hello, thanks for calling. We get that same thing too, trust me. But I promise you, that's not every single customer. Yeah. Those are the customers that have been there for three to five years and they know what we're doing, what we're calling for. But the new customers, that's who we're trying to get. 